Hey there, my Brood War brothers. It's time for your weekly dose of KCM. We're here with week four. Start things out on butter. Got a great lineup for you this week. Let's pull it up. We've got Sharp Rush, JYJ, Snow, Best, Bisu, Hero, Sulky, and Soma. Being to be a very strong week for both Protoss and Zerg. Uh, T Darren looking a little bit... Um, a little bit iffy, I'd say. JYJ is a strong contender. Rush as well, of course. Uh, Sharp. See how he does here against Best in game number one. He is in the top right-hand corner. Best is down in the bottom right. Quick reminder, guys. Or this game starts to pick up. Definitely go and hit that subscribe button. It seems like a lot of you... More than half actually are actually are watching uh, without being subscribed, so I do really appreciate it. Also, hit the like button, comment as well to bless the YouTube algorithm. I definitely do appreciate it. Got to get the word out there. Let people know that there are more great tournaments besides just ASL floating around out here, and there is... Some good English uh, casting if you can find it. Oh so, yeah, help me out. Got best now. Sending his probe straight across the map. He actually wants to take a look in here. Maybe st uh, steal this gas. Yeah, it looks like he does want to do that. So, let's snag the gas. Sharp. A little bit pissed off, you can tell. Pulling the uh, SCV out. Looked like he might have uh, thought about canceling that SCV and snagging the gas first, but probe came from such an angle that there was only seconds to react. Now Sharp is going to have to play a little bit scared here. He will have to deal with a best whatever is coming. Looks like best actually wants to take a Nexus first here after stealing the gas. It makes it very hard to punish best here because yes there is the possibility you could pull a bunch of scvs and send marines and try to bunker rush this nexus but you're not gonna have the follow-up vultures uh, to make that attack really effective here so sharp just trying to block the gateway a little bit he doesn't manage to do it for very long but um best I think he's going to be fine here. I think he's going to be absolutely fine. This is a very long map. Uh, the timings here, I, I, obviously I don't have a good idea of exactly how long it takes to get across the map with these units here. Uh, with an SCV pull, but I'm going to assume it's a little bit too long that Best will be able to get some Zealots out here in time. Should be able to hold a bunker rush coming across the map now there's a zealot on the way in production best is already mining here in the natural he's got his probes ready to chase down this marine only one marine here and four probes will easily deal with that he's just going to pull away the probe it starts to get targeted there really good play by best once again just pulling that probe back probe very low right now but as the zealot comes out here yeah he's he's going to get away with this no problem best in a great position now Sharp wasting the money on this bunker, wasting his time really coming across the map trying to put on this pressure. And uh, Bess is just going to get back to mining, send that zealot across the map, and get ready for the next phase of this game. Back at home, Sharp should have a bunker on the way. It looks like he actually doesn't, though. I think we've seen this before. Sharp making the same mistake in previous games, not making a bunker. There's a reason. There's a very good reason to have a bunker here. Even though he's got four Marines, technically he could deal with this Zealot without a bunker here. He should absolutely build one. And yes, he does actually build one. So he throws that down. Not going to make the same mistake twice. Make sure that that bunker is there. And a factory on the way. Robotics facility as well. Couple zealots. Are they going to try to run by? No. I think he already has the information. He's well aware that there should be a command center behind this bunker. Not going to be 
a two-factor or anything like that since the gas was so far delayed. A little bit of an unknown on the map here for best. Now with three zealots, he will actually run by here. The SCVs are going to come forward to block. Can he get a couple of those? Okay, two SCVs go down. Maybe even a third. That's pretty good. Four SCVs. Five SCVs. Very nice there for best. I mean, I think that was actually worth it. Three zealots for five SCVs. Um, the, the money doesn't quite add up for best, but uh, taking out SCVs is, is nice. It's really nice getting rid of those uh, of those miners. Throwing away some zealots, not the biggest deal. Zealots are not going to be too useful here as Sharp's very soon going to have a ton of vultures out here. Those dragoons are going to have a lot more value in the late game, so... I like the play there by best. If he'd gotten into the main, he could have made something. Could have made something pretty interesting happen, maybe. Drag things around. He would get a good scout as well. Uh, if not, I mean, he gets those five SCVs. He also stops a lot of mining, so he should be feeling good here. Now, best sending his shuttle across the map. This is an empty shuttle. I think just going in for the little scout here. Hopefully, maybe force some SCVs to pull away. That would be nice as well. Lose some mining time. Got a tank and four marines here. This shuttle just going to dart around, check things out, and pull right on back. Send it back to the main. There is a starport here in the corner, which means that uh, when Best actually makes it back here to Sharp's base, uh, with that shuttle, there's going to be a wraith present. So that's good news for Sharp. I mean... Having that already on the way, and he's going to get that Wraith out here very quickly. He knows that there's a shuttle coming, so he'll absolutely make that Wraith. That could be very bad for Best. We'll see how this goes, though. Best actually gets the Observer in here. He hasn't seen the Starport just yet. There's that Reaver. A push across the map coming from Sharp. It's being followed here by Best with the Observer. But he knows exactly where it is, where it's coming from. I'd like to see him get up on a high ground here because sitting down on low ground is not the best position for these de or for these uh, dragoons to attack from. Just going to use the reaver here to push back sharp. And I think all, all in all a nice move by sharp. I mean, I, you can tell that he's not really uh, super committed here to this attack. He does have three fact, but... I don't think that he's completely uh, interested in taking a huge fight here. It would be really hard against this many Dragoons and, of course, the Reaver as well. So, going to make a run by into the natural. Here we go. Sharp doing sharp things. Going to come in here to the main as well, throwing down some extra mines. Unfortunately, a round of Dragoons pops out just now. So, these uh, Vultures are going to get cleaned up here shortly. But he will get a few more probes before they go down. Nice. Mine connection there as well. And about four or five probes end up going down. Meanwhile, Sharp going to run towards this left side here. Try to get into a good position. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Don't send those tanks down that hill. That would be absolute death. Uh-oh. Sharp getting a little too big for his bridges, actually. I think that he should have definitely pulled this army back. Or just gone around to the left side and tried to set up a good position there now he's actually getting in once again with vultures this is sharp's calling card here the vulture run by doing a great job with that kind of making up for the misplays there wraith in position ready for any sort of drop to come through meanwhile best thinking about cracking the front here wraith is ready though gonna deal some damage to the shuttle forcing the shuttle back these dragoons have to retreat as well. I'm going to run around with the vultures once again. Looking for more opportunities to dive into that natural and third base. Third base actually on the top side. Has a lot of vulnerabilities here. He's going to go for it right over towards that third base. There's a couple of dragoons here, but not enough to stop these. I think that Sharp going to get nearly every probe here at this base. Oh, hold on a second. Wow, those dragons clean that up a lot faster than I thought. 
the probe drill was pretty darn good as well. What was that, like 10? 8, 10 vultures running into that third base? Hardly got any kills at all, though. A little bit surprising. Maybe they were injured previously. But regardless, best clean setup with relative ease. Keeps a lot of his probes alive at that third. Sharp now going to load up with a dropship. Sending this drop around the left side of the map here. I feel like it's really, really good on this map. Butter. It just feels way, way out of the way to get over to that side and actually deal with this drop. Um, because you're you're on a two-player map and this left side, it just it feels really, really far. Anyway, this dropship is going to come around just as best trying to set up his fourth base. There's actually no wall on the left side of the third base either, so Sharp could absolutely send vultures around that side and just sweep in there and kill tons of probes there he hasn't really uh, gotten a chance to do that yet almost picks off the shuttle and maybe just thinking that there would already be a pylon wall there it feels like there should be but there really isn't now that dropship picks off the probe stops the fourth base at least and sharp moving forward here slowly creeping up onto this third Best going to be very annoying here and continue to deny this. Sharp could try to take the base up to the left side of his natural instead. That, that's another viable option. Dropship coming here into the natural. Hank, is it going to siege up as well? He could get a ton of kills here. Ooh, not the greatest targeting. Targeting onto the gas geyser mining probes instead. A little bit unfortunate. We'll get a few kills, but hardly worth the cost of that tank plus dropship and two vultures. Now, best still denying the third here. And I have to make a cannon down at that fourth base just to clear that mine, unfortunately. He's doing a great job of slowing down Sharp here. Oh, unfortunately, taking some hits with that... A Reaver playing a, a difficult dance here between the Wraith and the Shuttle. Getting fairly heavily damaged. And it looks like Sharp's going to abandon his mission here, taking that third base. Instead, he's going to try and take the third at the 11 o'clock position. I feel like that's probably a good idea. Breaking that high ground is incredibly tough. Plus one is now done. Sharp setting up a lot of turrets in his main base. Once you spread out to the left side, that is one of the problems with taking that base on the left, is that uh, it doesn't protect you from drops or uh, arbiters coming in from the south. But I guess it does protect your left side a little bit. Not too bad. But it's definitely better, I think, to have that uh, southern base the base just below your main. That way you can set up turrets there and everything. And it makes it a lot harder for best to send in arbiters or drops into your main. Now, Sharp going to take this 11 o'clock base. He doesn't have his army out on the map, but he's predicted this attack into his main base. And all of the shuttles get picked off. Ooh, a huge swing here between these two players. Best picking an inopportune time there to dive into the main with three shuttles gets completely wiped out. Now Sharp sending his army out here. Can he hold on to this third base? It's quite late. I think even with losing all of those shuttles, Best is still decently positioned here with that fourth base coming up now. But Sharp definitely has a good chance to take this game now. Moving out a little bit by little. Pushing himself forward on towards that high ground. Best has an army that's kind of caught off right now. It's on that left side in the top left hand corner. There are mines behind that. So he'll have to make sure to bring the observer along with that army. Just clear out those mines. But he's in a great position to counterattack that third. As soon as Sharp starts to move out, we'll see. Sharp thinks that that's completely empty there. He's just going to get counterattacked into his third immediately. 
as soon as he pulls or pulls the trigger and starts to send his army across the map lots going on right now sharp dropping the main another base coming up for best as well he's taking a fifth already that tank gonna get cleaned up and taken out this third force to lift and move and sharp will have to push away this army before he can take that base once again now gonna grab this third here SCV is being sent back that's kind of running into mines a little bit getting dragged by these tanks as well he needs to be careful sharp sending in the vultures gonna get some run buys done here while all of the chaos is happening on his side of the map See if he can pick off a few probes here slow this protoss down but best is not one to be slowed down right now he is growing kind of out of control his supply is not that great it's not amazing but his income is about to be insane this fifth base here it will not be stopped zealots coming up to clear the mines and dragons will save this base best going to secure that no matter what now sharp i'm feeling a little worried for him, man that arbiter tribunal's done we're gonna have some stasis here soon possibly recall as well well he does have a science vessel as well but it's getting a little bit scary here and now moving forward with the big army that's a lot of stack tanks there luckily for him there's not too many shuttles left over after that dive in the main best hasn't continued to really produce those shuttles so he's only got one forcing sharp back though Sharp not ready to take this fight. Looks like he wants to grab a fourth here. Gonna extend him kind of dangerously out on the map, though. If he snags this fourth, that will kind of shore up his economy probably for the rest of the game. However, that leaves plenty of locations that can easily be recalled. Start pushing through the center. He wants to take this high ground. I mean, uh, actually on the low ground here on the right hand side he's uh, starting to press this small zealot dragoon army up into the corner separating it out there's only a ton of zealots there no dragoons in the front here he could actually end up losing all of his early templar those are high energy templar they've been building up that energy for quite a while so it'd be a shame to lose them here a couple of storms coming out here that shuttle just filled with templar but great pickoffs from sharp just snagging those templar the moment that they drop out of the shuttle there's another great storm dealing some more damage to these goliaths and vultures but sharp manages to reach this high ground position and i guess you can from here shell that nexus a very nice position for terran don't even have to come down off of the high ground and you can just hit that nexus kill that off very nice and safely he's gonna hold the army here from the high ground man that's scary to push into the medium size large ramp there i'm not even sure what to call that ramp. it's a pretty darn big ramp but coming up that ramp as a protoss player that that is a funnel man for a 200 200 army that is a serious funnel even though it's so large it's still going to force your units to bounce off each other a ton a lot of your units are going to get bunched up as well and easy easy pickoffs for the tanks now finally sharp taking a fourth base he's going to take it on the left hand side i kind of like that actually it does spread him out really far unfortunately but at the same time he is trying to hold this uh, high ground here. Un <laughs> As I say that, though, Bess just runs up and takes that because Sharp was pulling back for whatever reason. Now, Bess with about 20 million zealots in the center left of the map. I'm not sure what those are all doing there. A single Templar mixed in amongst the crowd. I don't know. What the plan is here or why those are in that location maybe for a counterattack? i don't really know but best is gonna get caught in this location nice storm there on the ramp with the army coming down 
Deals a lot of damage. But Best now gonna have to retreat here. He manages to hold his fourth somehow. I don't know how that fourth actually stayed up. With the tanks shelling from the high ground. Oh, no, excuse me. It did die. That is being rewarped in. Ooh, Arbiter, the first recall. Complete failure here for Best. Great EMP there by Sharp. Tons of turrets, though, as well. So I think that probably wouldn't have even made it in. Maybe it could have uh, forced or, or gotten a recall on the turrets there. But with enough turrets in mind, it's, it, it's not the biggest deal. You can deal with that. You just send a few units back home and uh, prevent your main from dying. Now, Sharp... After dealing with that first recall, he's got to be feeling great here. He has so many bases to mine from. He's going to get on this high ground again. Deal with this uh, Nexus here. Of course, Best has more Nexus on the other side of the map, but he's not going to be able to get this counterattack off. Sharp going to swing his army back across the map once more. Cut off this Protoss army. Send it scurrying back home. And uh, I'm feeling a little bit scared now for Best. He is running out of options here. The 3-1 mech is done. Those third upgrades for the attack. So vital here for the Terran army. But when they finish up, man, they are just incredibly strong. Best going to move through the left-hand side of the map. He wants to cut off this resource node. Try to stop the mining in the left-hand side. Sharp a little bit slow to react here. The army was just ahead of his army, but Best does have to fall back now. One of the Arbiters does get EMP'd. Now there's not enough energy for even a single spell, and if Best doesn't get a decent Arbiter spell off here soon, in combination with a... A great fight. I think he's going to slowly run out of gas here. Sharp is just going to continue to swing back and forth with his army, killing off bases, preventing the mining, taking more of the map, and eventually choke Best out of this game. Now, here comes Best. He's going to deal with this small army, it looks like. But quite a few... Zealots have to be spent to get that done. These Arbiters are also in danger of getting EMP'd once again. Standing there at the front of the army. Very dangerous proposition for Best right now, who's really reliant on those spells. He needs to get a really decent spell off here. Either a recall or a stasis. Time is kind of running out right now. 167 supply for Best. He doesn't have much money. There's hardly any probes at this base. That's crazy to me. Where are all the probes right now? Best really lacking in his probe count, which is is kind of crazy actually. I'm not. I'm not, really not clear on what happened to all those probes. We have seen probes go down all game, but we, I mean, you've got five nexuses. you got six nexuses right now, so um, I'm not sure where those ended up going. Now, we do have another Arbiter. It's got full energy, enough for a recall and another spell as well, as long as he upgraded that. No, he hasn't upgraded that yet. Arbiter energy has not been upgraded. Here comes the recall. Just recalling here into this base. Not the greatest recall, but he should be able to deny this command center from being finished. Another recall here on the left side. Okay, okay. Best mixing it up now. Making this a real game here. Might even get this command center on the left side. Of course, all of these dragoons are doomed to die right now. And I don't think much of the Terran army will actually end up falling. That's not good. Because... Sharp still has 165 supply. That's more than enough to push across the map and deal some serious damage. Um, 
and best supply is dropping rapidly those are some good storms nicely done landing those storms as the terran army tries to push forward killing off even more scvs as well picks up a few of those templar and does manage to get out arbiters are being picked off this base is gone was denied sharp relegated to just one mining base now whereas best is mining multiple multiple locations he still needs some great fights here oh a sick dodge oh okay that second emp does reach its mark stops that arbiter from getting the good spell that really best needs here in this next fight sharp still with no additional command center is he actually planning to grab another command center or does he just want to initiate a final push here okay we do have a command center moving towards the a center right like sharp planning to snag that base he's gonna bring his full army to bear but best has been doing a masterful job of moving from side to side kind of avoiding this army the whole time and finding weak locations where sharp his army is not now he's gonna find this location up here in the upper left the base that is nearly mined out but really sharp's only mining base at this point Come in here and deal with this tank and eventually take out this base. Start meanwhile pushing down across the map. Gonna kill these two fresh bases from best. Not gonna allow him to have much mining either. But it's kind of like uh, right now, I guess, two mining bases for Protoss and one mining base for Terran. That's still a pretty even fight. This could really come down to the wire here, guys. Quite the game number one right now. We've got best mining healthily over there on the center left. I guess his natural is about to mine out, so pretty soon he will actually be on one mining base. He's going to snag this center left, however. Try to keep himself going for a little bit longer. Three arbiters there. A lot of arbiters... Um, I don't know if any of them have any energy, though. That's really the important thing. Looks like we've got at least one stasis. Didn't get another click there. But I would say up to three stasis are available as long as Bess can dodge some of these EMPs. As long as he can come from a decent angle. He should have some chance against this army. It is a massive 3-2 army now from Sharp. 167 supply is very decent for a Terran in the late game. That's a lot of tanks, a ton of vultures as well. You know Sharp never skimps on vultures. And is a vulture producing machine. He makes great use of them. Now he's going to come back towards this base again. I guess Bez is going to snag center left now. Deciding that it's a little bit too dangerous there on the right hand side of the map. Since Sharp is expanding in that direction, his army will have to stay near that base. So uh, bases on the left hand side of the map are now fair game here for best his economy is not looking great right now but he is completely maxed out he has a fresh nexus there in the center left to mine off of now sharp in a snag center right cut kind of cutting the map in half not exactly but pretty nearly and that's not great for protoss that's never a good situation for protoss having the map cut in half will lead you to a loss for sure now here comes a arbiter coming through 12 o'clock oh my god the science vessel is right there oh he gets the stasis does he still have enough for recall yes he does nice best gonna get this recall in the main base here he comes Two more Arbiters pop through, but an instant EMP deals with those 
Uh, critical Arbiters there, that is rough stuff. I mean, might as well not even bring the Arbiters through with the army in that case. Uh, with the Science Vessels there, because that was just a complete waste. Could easily bring in more Arbiters later and try to uh, continue the recall chain, but... Sending all of the Arbiters through at the same time really hurt best there. Now he is going to be able to deny the center right base, looks like. Everything was sent back for Sharp to the main base. He had to send everything there. There were some great storms that actually made that pretty decent overall for best. And now that he's dealt with this base, I'd say he's in a pretty good position. We've got Arbiters once again more more and more being produced let's see if he can get some more good recalls i don't want to see him uh recall more arbiters though once again because that really didn't pay off um i i think the the recall itself paid off somewhat oh no oh god oh so painful so painful two arbiters there those two fresh Arbiters that had just gained enough energy for that recall end up getting EMP'd at the same time. Sharp finding those and picking them off is huge. That takes a ton of power out of the Protoss army. And it, it really shores up his main base. I feel like Sharp should be pushing right now. Just push across the map. Try to end this game. It's a perfect opportunity here while those Arbiters have no energy. They can't cast the Stasis. They can't recall your main. So why not just gather your forces and attack towards that natural sharp right now, though. He's sitting at his fifth base. Just kind of chilling here in the center right. Starting to bring his forces together, but... This has been a very passive game from Terran. I mean, he's only really initiated one head-on attack here. That was down towards that bottom left. He didn't even get really onto the best side of the map. Um, just that high ground area over best fourth base. That's really the only attack that Sharp has done so far. He's been so passive. Almost scared to take an engagement with Best throughout this game, but now Best. Gonna move around the left-hand side. That base up at that top left really doesn't have much minerals left over at it, so it's not much of a prize there. Best now mining all the bases on the left-hand side along that left wall. The map truly has been split in half now. It looks like Sharp wants to take another base on the right-hand side. See what Best has to say about that. More cannons being thrown up here. This base is a good idea because you know how willing Sharp is to throw vultures into an army. Here comes Best across the bridge. It's difficult to get over here. A pretty decent stasis though, and he has enough for one more. He throws it down. One tank gets wrapped up in that stasis, and so much of the army of Bess is just clumping here and taking a ton of time to walk across this bridge. I feel like this attack would have been great if not for that tiny bridge there. Best is going to get on top of these tanks, and he has reduced the army count by a lot. Actually, the Zealots, for the most part, still alive here. Intense amount of army supply being thrown into this attack, but Best looks to have cracked Sharp. He manages to take out that center right base, and there's hardly anything left now. There's another stasis. Best with the great Arbiter play this game. Managing to take this Terran player down. Sharp dropping below 70 supply. He finally GG's out. And there you have it, our first game of this week of KCM. A real nail-biter there between Sharp and Best. Alrighty, hopping into game number two now. Got Hero versus Best. Best over here in the top left. And Hero in the top 
right. How are you guys doing today? Hope you're doing well. Dealing with the crisis. It shall not be named. Handling the fact that we might be headed towards a third world war. A lot to think about. It's nice to have something. Take your mind off of it all. At least that's what I'm going to do. Try to... Uh, just let it go. Recognize that I'm not really in control of that situation and try to take control of the things that I am in control of and deal with things that way. I think that's the best option, honestly, and just try to have fun with it, you know? Try to have a good time, try to enjoy life. Watch some good games of Brood War. Always takes my mind off of the craziness. We had an attempted cannon rush there. Nothing really coming of it though. Hero. Pretty good block. Did pull quite a few drones though, so he did sacrifice a bit of his economy. Of course, best sacrificed. A lot of mining time there with two probes, so things kind of evening out. Best with his nexus down now and a gateway before cannon. Being a little bit greedy. Does still have a view here in the main base. Sees that there's no lings just yet. Now they are headed out on the map, so that's going to be fine here with that cannon. Nearly halfway done, a third base at the center right position here for Hero. Be taking it nice and easy here in the early game of uh, this PVZ. A little bit of back and forth, nothing really serious going down just yet. Everybody putting their economies together. Preparing for the next stages of the game. Likely going to be a Stargate thrown down here in just a second. That's going to do his utmost best to keep that probe alive. Find out if there's going to be a Spire follow-up here. He's kept this alive long enough now that he knows there's not going to be any threat of a hydralis bust or anything like that so just keep this alive a little bit longer and then he can send it on back home and do the remainder of his scouting with a corsair here or sell it headed towards the third base our two links out here to meet that's going to send the second zealot around the top side of the map so Try to draw some links down to this area and run a second zealot into the natural. Looks like hero onto that strategy though. Knows it's coming. Ooh. Hydralis Den on the way here. Hydralis Den is coming in the main and this zealot just going to walk straight up into the main. Spot everything. No secrets here for hero. Going to be completely revealed. Ooh, one drone getting picked off as well. Of mismanagement here by Hero. Like another drone got picked off in the main base. So two drones and the entire strategy is revealed. Hero in a rough spot here. Have a hard time coming back. Well, best. Getting his citadel. Adding on a second cannon. Feeling good. Feeling safe. Might even add on additional cannons. No, he does not. Gonna chill here. That's quite a few lings. Okay, the second zealot coming up to that gap. Making sure that there's no run by here from a hero. Could have gotten a little bit sketchy there. There's no cannon in the main, and that is a good group of speedlings. 
and really throw a wrench into things for the Protoss if that makes it into the main. So good on Bess for keeping that out. Another attempted run by here. No. We're just going to back off. And um, we're getting set up here. Bess going to start his gateway explosion. The second forge is down as well. He knows there's a chance that uh, Hero could still build a few Hydras and try to break down this wall for the Zealot Speed completes. I don't think that's going to happen. So instead, just double upgrades going to be coming through here. Best. Going to delay his first attack for a little bit here. This is the part I find very difficult as the Zerg player. Trying to figure out exactly what this Protoss is doing. Is he going to hit me now with about 9, 10 Zealots? Or will he sit back and wait a little bit longer with that second forge? You just don't, just don't quite know. I guess if you come up here and see these two Templar, you get a, a much better idea of what's going on. But likely best going to start that plus two upgrade. He's going to have plus two plus one at a really early timing here. Likely when we see only plus one for these Hydralis. I see one Evo chamber, chamber here and running up trying to hit this wall. This is a suicidal attack here for Hero. You cannot get in there against that many cannons plus Templar just never going to happen. Coming up, trying to hit that wall there a little bit. Storm's going to deal with those Hydras. Best still sharking around the map with these couple of Zealots, but we'll end up losing those. Just about five gateways now down, ready for best. Fire now on the way, so tech switching back around. Hero now adding on even more drones. He's got a good number of Hydra here, so he needs to get that economy where he wants it in order to take on this next push from Bess. When it finally does come out, Bess' attack is going to be ferocious here. He'll have a ton of Templar. He's going to have a lot of production, tons of Zealots popping out here as well. With that 2-1, it'll be a very scary timing attack. You can see gate 7 and 8 finishing up. If he decides to add on any Dragoons as well, Hero taking the base in the bottom right, that will be cancelled here, looks like, by Best sending a few Zealots down towards this location hmm, getting stuck there unfortunately probably want to send those around and actually get that hatchery yeah for sure he wants to get that picking off that hatchery is huge I'm gonna slow down hero's plan here by quite a lot of course he can just throw down another hatch no problem he is gonna trap these zealots as well but Bess may take this opportunity to move out across the map and start his assault on the natural. And he will do some Dragoons popping out now. A bunch of Templar headed up towards the north side as well, taking the third base behind this movement. Bess still baiting here with these Zealots. Ooh, big transition into Muta. Not too sure. Is this enough Dragoons to keep these Templar alive? If he dives on here, picks off these three Templar, and then turns with his Hydra army and attacks this third base, he might just lose it. As two Templars are dead, a third Templar goes down immediately after. Beautiful control there by Hero. Snipes so important here. With no Templar remaining, I think Hero can just go for it. He's still holding these Zealots down here at the bottom, so it looks like he's not ready to do so just yet. He will send the Muta to finish off all of these Zealots. They've just become free. 
they do commit themselves to attacking down this ramp, but only one Hydra dies. Or about seven or eight Zealots, so a really poor trade, economically speaking, here for best. You're doing a great job of getting himself into a good position after that early uh, opener where he lost two or three drones to the early zealot attacks he's now looking very good here the templar pick off pickoffs really helping a ton here comes the mutas another templar pickoff only one templar remains he already used his spell as well oh my goodness hero just sniping down all the templar now the only thing that remains here Dragoons and Zealots are not going to be enough to hold back the tide of Hydra's pouring forward. You can see flanking from both sides here. Hero just stands and fights. No micro required. Okay, he is going to micro up the ramp a little bit. Fighting from low ground, it doesn't matter. Storm hits one Hydra. And he will push forward, just surround these Dragoons. Pick off the backbone of the Protoss army. Looks like Hero does have to fall back. It was a poor engagement overall. If he had sent more of those Hydras around the bottom side, I think he wins right there. You can see only plus one upgrades. I think Bess upgrades helping him a lot during that fight. But is it going to be enough? This next wave of units will be devastating here. Another storm going down. Three more Templar going to fall. Okay, two Templar do fall, but they've cast all their storms. So again, no storms will be available for this next fight. You're going to attack from the south this time with a lot more forces. You can see he's learned his lesson. The fourth base is up and running here for Hero as well. No Templar being produced right now. Ben's just going to have to fight with what he's got. Too bad there's no... Uh, lurkers in this army, but I think just pure Hydra might be able to break this. That's a lot of Zealots. Zealots with plus two, plus two against just the Hydras with plus one. Wow. Somehow able to push this back. He's winning this fight brilliantly here. Best running out of Zealots, though. He will have to pull back once the Zealots are gone. Dragoons versus... Hydra. Pure Dragoon versus pure Hydra. Not the best. Or the Protoss. So once the Zealots are gone, he will have to pull back. It's kind of similar to a Terran army. You need some of those units to soak up that damage. Once those are gone, the Dragoons absolutely have to fall back. So... Like best pushing through the middle. He's taking another base here in the center left. He's got Hero on the back foot quite badly. I'm surprised that he's able to do this well without having any storms hit this army. Still managing to take these fights and actually win. Really the power of upgrades on display here. Hopefully, Hero adding on some more Evo Chambers. Try to catch up a little bit here. Get some Carapace upgrades. Try to get some uh, melee upgrades as well because the time of the Ling has just about arrived. We also need to see Hero add on a few Lurkers. We have yet to see a single Lurker this game. He's just sticking with this Hydra play and on four bases with at least seven or eight hatcheries feels a little bit crazy to just purely build hydra and think you're going to win there we go evolution chambers coming down queen's nest as well there is getting set up here for that transition uh-oh a pincer attack here by best catching these hydras on the ramp Will force the retreat here. Good splitting of the units by Hero. He's being forced back on all fronts, dropping well below in supply to what best has amassed. Ooh, that's a lot of lurker eggs stacked up on top of one another. 
two storms could kill every single one. But luckily for Hero, that's not going to push forth just yet. I don't see any observers with this army either. So, okay, there's the first observer. Moving forward, if this observer gets picked off, that could really buy a lot of time here for Hero. That's now shoving forward up the t uh, up this map. He's going to look to uh, attack into the third base now. No sunken colonies on that high ground, but a ton of lurkers making their way up here. I think Hero should be able to hold off against this. This is so many lurkers moving up into position. There's no storms thus far. That's a great storm too. Lurkers getting just smashed there. Still on only plus one. So Hero having a very hard time against this fully upgraded Protoss. Another big storm there on the ramp. Stopping Hero from reinforcing. However, this Protoss army is completely cut off now. If he surrounds and kills every DT or every single uh, Dragoon here, that's going to be a huge reset to Bess army. Unfortunately, though, for our Zerg player, Bess going to send up another wave. Not able to cut off and kill this army. Hero is in full retreat. Going to allow these three hatcheries to go down that is a significant portion of his production. GG is called. Hero taps out. Best goes on. Okay, Best sitting on a double kill here. Sharp and Hero have been taken up. Taken out. AYJ is up next. Down here in the bottom left of Eclipse. If we get a gas deal here. Can be very powerful on this map. Kind of uh, just the thing right now. And yeah, he is going to send that probe out. Pretty much metagame these days. Possible for the Terran player to deny that. It does take a little bit of forethought though. You have to cancel your SCV as you see the probe move in to take the gas. And you'll be able to grab that. Of course, your economy will be slightly delayed. That probe will be there to harass you. Nonetheless, see, cancel, cancel. Nope. JYJ not going to cancel here. Just going to allow this to happen. You must be feeling comfortable to deal with that. I, I hate dealing with this, honestly. One of the most frustrating things about playing Terran on this map, dealing with the gas deal, I would absolutely cancel that SCV and take the gas just to not have to deal with the Protoss taking the initiative, taking a Nexus first. That's what he's going to do, by the way. Nexus first here. What are you going to do about it? Terran player, you have no gas. Just gonna sit there, build your command center way later than this Nexus. And there's just gonna be the Protoss with the full initiative to harass your build and potentially break you in the mid game. Ooh, that was really close. One HP on this probe. Oh my goodness. Ooh, wow, that SCV just barely managed to get away there. It always amazes me to watch these players go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a probe. Uh, he's got to run away. Ten health left. Take a couple more shots there, but he will escape. The SCV does have zero range. I didn't know it's the only ranged unit with zero range basically a melee unit but it can't hit under dark swarm not sure who made up or who who thought of that but um fuck you <laughs> frankly 
<laughs> I just had to run to the bathroom there, guys. My stomach. Something's going on. Don't know what it is. This Marine trying to get in here. I think he's going to have a rough time. Reminds me of the time I had Montezuma's Revenge. If you don't know what that is, it's famous in Canada and the U.S. It's a Mexican thing. Go there to travel. You might get it. Kind of like a diarrhea thing. See people sprinting across the beach trying to reach the washroom in Mexico. You know what it is. Montezuma's Revenge. Honestly, not the worst stomach ache I've ever had in my life though when I was young when I was a teenager I went to South Africa and had some horrible horrible stomach pains uh, I was there on a rugby trip so we were in a bus tour bus ended up having to pull over so we could stop at a washroom and I was in the bathroom leaned up against the wall praying for it to be over I was so sick I just couldn't even get up off the toilet seat and as I was laying there in a daze really because I was in so much pain I heard the tour bus pull away and drive off and I just didn't even care I was just so wrecked they eventually came back for me about 30 minutes later I was still on the toilet, but... <laughs> oh my goodness, that was a terrible, terrible sickness. I think I eventually reached, uh, I guess we reached a city and I took some medicine and slept for about 24 hours. And when I woke up, I felt a lot better. It was a rough one. Shout out to my friends in South Africa. Beautiful country. Nice block here by JYJ. Getting that engineering bay down. The third base. These zealots were all the way across the map. So. Gonna have to deal with this. Some probes here. Pretty good slowdown on Bess' uh, third base take here. Taking advantage of his aggressive posture with those zealots. Now JYJ. Getting up this turret ring. Making sure he's safe here. We'll be pumping out of two factories for now. We'll see if he wants to throw down a third CC. At any point, it is pretty tough to hold a third CC on this map. The distance between your natural and your main by air is extremely close, but by ground, it's a long distance to cover purely with tanks. So you really have to prepare adequately in order to take that base. You have to have a ton of tanks. I think you need at least four to six factories in order to hold that. Especially against a good Protoss player and a player who's going for shuttles, possibly even speed shuttles as well. That that makes a an extra layer of difficulty there to holding that third base. So JYJ is going to take his time here. He does have those vultures out with speed. Fortunately, lost one before it could throw down its mines, but now I'm going to get some mines over in that top left-hand part of the map. And he's just going to grab a starport, add on those additional factories, and go ahead. Take this into a bit of a later game. I doubt we'll see a big push from JYJ for quite a while here maybe 10 or so minutes around 160 supply after that 30 third base has been taken let's see let's see what time 
he ends up pushing out here. That was just kind of a guess off the top of my head. We'll see if he pushes before 18 minutes. It looks like best possibly going for a Arbiter game here. Wasn't fully paying attention, but I definitely saw a Templar Archives. And I don't see any buildings in the main that look like a starport, but I doubt that he's just going pure Templar, although that is a build. Oh, no, I don't see a Templar Archive, so no. Not just yet. Sticking with the speed shuttles and reavers. A lot of defenses here, ready for best. JYJ. I think he actually spotted that shuttle or that uh, dropship coming out of JYJ. He actually, I'm sure of it. That uh, observer just sitting right over top of his starport. So. He knows exactly what's going on right now. He's completely prepared. Cannons in all locations. This, this uh, <laughs> vulture not going to get anything done. Look at the dropship coming up here to the third. Four vultures could get a few kills. There is a cannon here. Okay, just two vultures. So really not going to get much out of this dropship. Best repelling that nicely. And slowing down this push out by JYJ by quite a lot. With just those two Reavers picking them up and constantly pulling back. Unloading, waiting for JYJ to advance. Ooh, JYJ gets a shot off. Bit of a mistake there by Best. It's the Observer as well, that's nice. Good pick off there. Best taking his fourth. This is where things do get pretty rough for the Protoss player. Or excuse me, for the Terran player. So many bases can be taken here by Best. And even if Best just allows... Okay, just kind of falls back. Let's JYJ take this base. He's already delayed him by so much. Best is going to have a fully mining fourth base here. By the time JYJ gets a CC down at that third, and he's not even going to do that. He's going to come up here and possibly just roll straight through JYJ. He's at 133 supply, 187. Here we go, shoving forward here. Ben's going to run over this army. That's so many zealots. Tons of drops as well. Where's the Reaver going to land? There it is. Dropping on these tanks. Killing off a ton of those. Great job with the Reaver here. Still keeping that alive as well. Wow, that one mine hit was ridiculous. About eight zealots just vaporized to that mine shot. He is going to pick off one or two more tanks and then fall back. Every single Dragoon does die, but both the Reavers do remain. So, to be able to keep a presence here out in the front. A lot more zealots being produced. And the third base not allowed to land. That's great news for Best. J Best is just going to fall back here. Reaver's on this high ground. He will lose the Reaver finally, looks like. And JYJ will actually take this third base. However, Storm Drop. Here we go. Storm. Okay, he stormed his own shuttle there. Didn't matter, that was about to go down anyway, but uh, kind of hilarious. Storming his own shuttle there, but that's fine. Best still in a commanding lead here. Earned 53 supply. Good 50 supply above his opponent. Arbiter Tribunal coming down. He has a late game goal here. Be getting into Arbiter, JYJ. Still a long way away from pushing. His tank count is incredibly low. He's taking position here. 
to deal with any attacks from best coming through the top part of this map but does he have all the other pathways dealt with i think that that bottom pathway could be exploited here by best if he sends a ton of zealots around that side he could flank this army really effectively you guys know what i'm talking about that little pathway between the natural and that high ground uh, just above JYJ's base. Now all the vultures are actually running through that. Like he will be able to get some stuff. Oh, getting the mines dragged over here. He kills off some SCVs, but he loses the Reaver. And Blar with the storm. Quite a few SCVs end up going down there. Good harassment here by Bess as he snags another base in the bottom right. Looking good for our Protoss here. I think he'll be able to buy easily enough time here to get himself up to Arbiters. A little bit unfortunate. Sending his Dragoons to their demise. Fighting against those mines. And these Vultures are paying for themselves. Uh-oh. Need to fall back there. Gotta keep these dragoons alive, man. It's tough. Yikes. Nexus doesn't go down best. Delayed once again. Really good by JYJ to just keep on that. He's still behind one base, but at least best doesn't have that Nexus in the bottom right just yet. That's buying JYJ a little bit more time, a little bit more breathing room here. While he tries to get up to... That pushing supply, 160 is what we're looking for. Coming in here on some probes. Getting some good kills. That is five cannons. Still able to clear out most of the probes at that base, though. Ultras certainly are strong, especially with good upgrades. Another Nexus going down here. Two Nexus, and actually best taking both bases in this bottom. A part of the map. Being a little bit optimistic here. We'll see if he's able to hold on to those. Looks like JYJ wants to push north and snag his fourth. So unlikely that JYJ will send forces to the bottom right to actually deal with those spaces unless he does a drop or something like that. Probably not going to happen. He needs everything in this area there. To defend his new fourth base so um best probably just gonna mine happily in the bottom right here from now on jyj just kind of stalling things out best looking for opportunities maybe to dive in here and kill some tanks that could make things a lot easier for him if he delays his push a little bit longer. Coming in here for a storm drop. Not many SCVs in this location. We'll try to get as many as he can. That was pretty good. Say about, well, this Templar has seven kills, so not bad at all. Of course, it's not the money storms that he was looking for. Tons of the SCVs had been transferred to other locations and JYJ getting set up possibly to push towards this base in the 12 o'clock area 11 o'clock I guess you could say to Stargate Arbiter pumping out those Arbiters gonna be gaining that energy Getting prepared here for a recall. Now JYJ is spread out quite far. And he's at the time when a push is a possibility here. We are at 18 minutes now, but Bess is going to fly in with a ton of hallucinated arbiters here. Diving straight forward. Can he actually get this? Oh, whoa, wait a second. The EMP goes off, but this recall still comes through. 
Great movement by JYJ, though. Traps this army instantly and wipes that out. He's already on the move here, sending all of his forces back immediately north. He's looking to deal with this recall. Another recall coming through on that fourth base. Son of Zealots diving on top of these tanks. A pretty decent trade here for Bess. We'll see how quickly he remaxes because JYJ likely going to counter attack here as the dust settles. Okay, maybe not. Looks like he's trying to regain his balance here. Main and natural secure. Fourth base. Getting reinforced at the moment. Another Stargate going down. Looks like a carrier transition from Best. He has the income to do it. Mining from both those bases in the bottom right. He's got so much money. Might as well switch into carrier. Make it more difficult for JYJ to fight here. Will JYJ catch on to this? I mean, it, does it even matter? Because Bess is just going to remax anyway. There's not like a timing here where JYJ can hit before the carriers come out. It's actually going to be good. I feel like you should just play this slowly. Push through the middle of the map and cut off the natural. If you can get to that natural and shut that down, he should be able to win this game because there's no other place on the map to build gateways. There's nowhere else that those can come out of. But if he waits until this fleet begins done, if he waits till there's six or so carriers, this game is going to get insane. Bank is getting big for Bess. He's actually saving a lot of money here and space in his supply as well to build these carriers. You can see he's stopped at 171 supply. That's not a mistake. As soon as these Stargates are ready, there you go. He does fill up the remainder of his supply with those carriers. This is the moment now. JYJ going to start to push forward. Tentative push forward there. JYJ is pulling back now, heading north. Getting ready to deal with these Dragoons. It's only a small force of Dragoons, though. Look at this. JYJ wanting to knock out some of the bases in the bottom right. But with only a, about a quarter of his army headed down here, I think he could end up getting crushed. Nice stasis there. Preventing the EMP from going down. This is just pure tank. This is a horrible, horrible idea for JYJ. The Arbiter is just keeping all of these. Oh no, they're all... Oh my god, no scan here from JYJ. What is he doing? Oh, there's no scan at all. The Zealots just dive on top of every single tank and wipe them out. Great storms too as he retreats. Cuts that army down quite a bit. Let's throw some storms down on this high ground. Nice EMP there to prevent further damage from those storms. And it looks like JYJ might be able to break this. Unless more uh, recalls come down, it looks like he will. He's getting into that tight little nook there. Nice storm, really nice storm there. The Matrix canceling that out though. More storms coming through. He's trying desperately to hold this base as his carriers are being produced. Best also taking top left. I don't think that base is likely to survive. This one starting to go down as well. Yeah, here's JYJ just creeping forward. Best has so much money though. And all of his carriers are popping out here. It's going to be a massive counterattack shortly for Best. But will it be enough? JYJ still does have a lot of money. He will be making a bunch of Dragoons here, or excuse me, Goliaths here. And he finishes off this command center with that quick recall. Able to kill those tanks. And get that command center. Now, four carriers are out. I think if he heads south, 
and deals with that army down there. He can hit the natural and do well with that attack, but looks like he's trying to prevent his fourth base from going down here. Big army coming forward. There should be a stasis shortly. Where is he going to throw that stasis down on some of these goliaths? And a few tanks as well. There'll be another stasis here in a moment. Arbiters are going down nicely done. Huge stasis there. Cleaning up this army. These carriers can actually push forward and start to hit that fourth base. But it looks like he's just going to wait for the stasis to run out. This is a, kind of a counter to himself right now. Best delaying the killing of this army. Going to give JYJ a little bit of time to macro up his Goliath force. And take a better fight here. That's a lot of carriers, though. A lot of carriers being brought to the fore here. Seven carriers ready to go. I'm not sure if they have all of their interceptors just yet. But JYJ is ready. He has made a crazy amount of Goliath now. Going to try to push down this area. EMP lands on every single carrier, so quite vulnerable to these Goliath shots. If a JYJ manages to jump on top, look at that. Gets almost picks off one carrier. We get these S. Oh, oh that stasis is huge. Science vessels do go down. And Templar trying to run forward. They want to get those storms on the Goliaths. You kind of treat the Goliaths like Hydralis here. Throwing the storms down on top of them deals so much damage. And it really protects the carriers nicely. So he's looking to get those good storms. Holding this base in the upper left is crazy. Best still mining off that with a burning nexus. Nobody mining currently in the bottom left. All eyes are on this location. JYJ trying to break this location, but his tanks just quickly being picked off. There are so many carriers out now. This is like 11 carriers now, guys. This is the crazy amount of carriers where all it takes is this number of carriers plus two or three Templar. You can take on just about any amount of Terran army as long as you do it correctly as long as you get the storms on the Goliaths and you snipe the tanks with the carriers you should be able to win any fight efficiently looks like the interceptor numbers are starting to go down here best engaging in this fight for a little bit of a long time though he does have so many carriers at this point he can remake these interceptors at a crazy rate. He's picking off the tanks. And it looked like he was eating through these Goliaths for a little while. But he seems to have run out of the interceptors now. He's got to fall back here. The space is going to go down. Top left will be claimed now by the Terran. And best, he doesn't have any domination over the bottom right, unfortunately. Not able to get those bases going, so he's going to make a few more Arbiters. He's going to pick off as many tanks as he can. But uh, best a little bit on the ropes here, surprisingly. After a great game, he is somehow getting ground down by JYJ. Like, trading out Goliaths for Interceptors. Always a nice trade. Best here. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What's this down in the bottom left? We've got two Templars with crazy amount of storm energy. But just not throwing those down. A little bit too much attention being paid here in the upper left. We get some of those uh, Templar going. In a good spot. There's a good stasis there. Oh, both these Templars do fall without casting any storms. That is a heartbreaker. 
for Bez, who could have probably killed that entire mineral line of SCVs, pushed them away, done it again later on with those Templar. I mean, 250 energy on both of those, so that does hurt. Now, this is a crazy amount of stasis to Goliaths here. Don't, do not want to be over top of that group of Goliaths when they do on Thaw, though. Like he's going to take the opportunity here that this stasis has bought him to take small fights with these Goliaths that are not uh, caught in the stasis. Falling back now that those have unstasis. Two carriers down here. Not very often that you see a two carrier army fighting against a command center, but there you have it. Looks like a... Uh, another Arbiter maybe down in the bottom right, joining that army. He really needs to get a probe down there and take another base. JYJ going to push through this area here, try to take out that fourth. Command Center is under pressure. Carriers are a little bit trapped here actually. JYJ doing a good job of surrounding these, pushing them back. Best is out of money now. He's got no income on the map. He's bringing his carriers all together. But JYJ, it seems like after all that's been done, all that's been that's happened throughout this game, he's finally managed to grind this Protoss player down. Best is just about out of steam here. Still trying to build a few more interceptors. But running so low on minerals now. He's got no mining whatsoever. And he can't build even a single nexus at this point. Oh, it's a observer down in the bottom right-hand corner. JYJ still mining at his fourth base. Best just not getting any minerals from any location here. He's going to long distance mine, it looks like, from the fourth. JYJ running very low here in the fourth. Long distance mining from the top right. Uh oh, best running in to this fight here. He's getting some good stasis, but there's a bunch of Goliaths on the left hand side that are just diving on these carriers. Trying to take the best fight he can. He's trapping a lot of the Goliaths here with his stasis. These carriers just ripping apart a ton of the Goliaths on that low ground. Now going to go to work on these tanks. Goliaths here on the high ground here. This is so many interceptors. AYJ is running low on Goliaths here, but none of these interceptors can be rebuilt. There's just no money here for that purpose. He's waiting on a few more seconds before these uh, stasis... Goliaths actually melt here, and finally they do. Now they're going to be able to fight back. Best has no money at all, so he just can't even build a single interceptor here. His long-distance mining has been stopped. He picks off that science vessel. That is huge. He's going to get a couple more stasis here. Five more seconds for this last stasis. He's going to get a few more of these Goliaths. And use the opportunity to pick off the uh, isolated ones here. Nice targeting on these Arbiters, picking them off. Another stasis goes down. This is so close. There's only a few more interceptors left. I think if JYJ just micros here and targets interceptors, he's just going to be able to win. These are flying paperweights here. They have no... Interceptors left best. He is donezo. Guy's got... What is this? Eight carriers and no interceptors. No money in the bank. He just can't do anything. Look at this one interceptor. Oh my god. Oh my god. GG. What a game. JYJ takes it. A nail biter there. But he finally does take that game and ends best streak. Nicely done. Getting the clapper from KCM. Great game there.
never give up never surrender that's the model from that last game jyj pulling it out man can't believe you won that one now he's going up against soma here soma spawning in the bottom right jyj top right vertical spawns most aggressive zerg player we have right now one of the younger players one of the newer players has had a lot of success recently looking towards an asl victory though he's been in the round of four many times well i say many i, I guess it's like two or three maybe four now that's pretty crazy i mean he's right at the top but just barely not able to get there just yet same thing with rush as well he's one of these newer players who puts out some great great games super aggressive as well but just not able to take home an asl victory so far we'll see if this is the season i don't have my bets on soma though looking towards both the soul key and royal the other terran player who is on the come up right now looks like we've got a two hatch play from soma sticking with that he's been liking the third or the early third base a lot recently See if he wants to get that so far not so much maybe after the spire goes down we'll see JYJ doing a good job of just staying in the front with that SCV keeping an eye on things there's been no ling so far Soma being very lax on the ling production finally popping out four gonna go track down that scv it's nice because soma does have his overlord in that position he's had his overlord over the natural this entire time he knows the build here he knows the amount of marines that are present so he's not afraid of getting attacked here in the early game he knows what's going to be coming that third base does now get thrown down that is still an early third base it is in the natural location of the bottom left it will surround and finish off that this is moving extremely fast i don't know those lings seemed moving really quickly there maybe it's just my eyes i am a little bit tired right now long day at work <laughs> but Soma does deal with that SCV and we'll see what his follow-up is here this has become more popular since the 2.5 hatch became a thing it's been more and more popular recently to grab an early third base at that 2.5 hatch timing rather than taking the hatch in the main after the spire grabbing a base out on the map and then just utilizing mutilus micro to hold back these marines and eventually transition later on in the game with a stronger mid game of course you have that earlier gas but he's not going to produce and send drones to that location instead just going to slowly drone up at that third base until he's got oh three drones on the gas i can't believe jyj doesn't have these turrets up in time I, I was actually in the middle of saying something i wasn't expecting this but jyj laid on the turrets he loses about two or three maybe scvs there really painful that timing is so sharp but he has to be so sharp Maybe JYJ not quite used to this map. I believe it is Allegro. But just 
not getting the timing down there, thinking that maybe Soma is going to take a little bit longer to send the Mutas over and loses a good bit of his economy there because of that. Now going to try and dive in the natural. No, falling back here. Some of these Mutas are pretty low. Nice job by JYJ just running these down. Wow. Two more Mutas go down there. And JYJ doesn't even get a single, or excuse me, Soma doesn't get a single shot off with those Mutas. Now a Firebat making its way into the third base. That's so painful. A stim up here and kill off some drones. Two hitting these drones right now. We'll have to pull back. Nice. Okay, so Soma only loses a single drone. I thought there was going to be more damage there, but just one Firebat. So he does manage to bring the Meatless back and deal with that. Now, JYJ kind of cut off here in the middle of the map. Pretty far away from his own natural. It's going to be hard to reinforce here. So I'm going to start to pick away at these Marines. And if he gets a few Marines, a couple of Medics, with the number of links he's got here, probably he can't pick this off, but I'm not going to rule it out. Armory on the way. Ooh. Looks like we're going to have some Valkyrie play here from JYJ. Recognizing a pretty serious committal here from Soma to the Meatless tech. Continuing to build those and no transition just yet. So maybe JYJ with a few uh, Vi uh, with a few Valkyries could turn the tides here. Smash through this Zerg player. There's a Hydralis Den plus que Queen's Nest now, but it's not going to be up here for quite a while. We're still a long way away from any Defiler, from any Valk or from any uh, Lurkers either. So maybe there's a timing here where JYJ can come out and push through these Mutas, take a good fight, and actually win this game before Soma can get to late now. Soma diving in here behind the mineral patches. This is so frustrating. These Marines will not move. Oh my goodness. JYJ losing so much here. So many free hits for Soma. He just ruins this economy. He's picking off so many Marines here. This might be it, guys. I'm not even joking. This is so good for Soma. He's killed an insane number of SCVs. He picked off a huge amount of Marines as well, and now JYJ's timing has just been ruined. I think that if Soma just continues to build Lings and Mutas, and he should be able to just overwhelm this army. He does have some Hydras popping out, of course. We'll be getting some Lurkers started here, but this army of JYJ is so small. 60 supply here. He's going to try to push across the map with two tanks, but I just don't think he has the anti-air. One Valkyrie plus there's a few Marines. Oh, he's going to pick off this Valkyrie as well. It gets a couple of shots off, though. That was some good damage on those Mutas. And no kill on the Valkyrie. Critical for JYJ here as he starts this attack. Two tanks have arrived. Oh my gosh. Loses a Valkyrie there. He could have lost both, actually. Luckily for him, though, only losing the one. Tanks here. Do they have... Oh, is he going to get it? Okay, he does get that Valkyrie. And the tanks here are now going to siege up. That siege mode just finishing. There's hardly any Marines, though, and this tank could be picked off. There it is. Tank goes down. Lurkers coming from behind here with these Mutas. I think he should be able to defeat JYJ here. Three more Lurkers pop up in the front. He runs forward and deals with that, but the flank from behind here, JYJ's force is completely cleaned up. I think JYJ likely to tap out here uh, after that loss. So brutal, these Marines just moving up, getting completely wiped. GG. Soma with the win. All right. Three 
games. Actually, four games now. Or is this game number five? This is game number five. Five games in three days. Been working a lot of overtime lately. Working at my new job. You guys want to find out more about that? Patreon.com. See what I'm up to. But I've been working a lot of overtime, so haven't had a, a ton of time after work to do some casting. Also been very tired, so splitting it up over multiple days. Uh, those were the days back in Japan when I had tons of time. I could do an entire ultimate battle in one day. Seven games in one day. Those were the good days. Anyway, we're here. Still doing it. We got Soma versus Bisu. Of course, this is Polypoid. Soma in the top right and Bisu in the top left. Should be a fun game here on this most standard of maps. Plenty of practice from both players on this map. They know it. They love it. Should see a good game here. Good PVZ to continue this series. I was about to say start it out, but... <clears throat> We are in the middle right now. Been watching a lot of ASL lately as well. Of course, I'm sure a lot of you have been too. So, getting home after work. It's tempting to just sit down and watch ASL instead of cranking out some videos. But, um, eventually that will change. ASL doesn't last forever. There's plenty of downtime. So, when that happens, when that comes along... Going to have a lot of videos to catch up on. Planning to expand the podcast as well. Do some Ultimate Battle podcasts too. For those of you who don't know, can't actually do a video like this for Ultimate Battle because Africa TV will strike my channel. Unfortunate part of this community that uh, the Korean play or the Korean. Uh, the publishers are pretty protective of their content. Now, we've got Bisu here. He sent his zealot all the way across the map, forced quite a few links. But now he's in danger here. We're gonna have to deal with all these links coming across the map right now, and even more are popping out. So that's a good indication to Bisu that uh, pressure is not gonna stop here for a little while. He's actually gonna pull probes as well. He's built this wall. He has three zealots. Ooh, a shield battery being added on. So he's taking this very, very seriously. Uh, for good reason. Four, fourth zealot pops out. I think he's going to be okay here. Especially with that shield battery. There's just really no way to get through this. Unless Bisu makes a huge mistake, which he shouldn't end up doing. Nice pick off there. Really, really nice pick off. Or Soma getting that probe as he was trying to climb the ramp there. Still no third base. Out of Soma, which is very strange. He has a layer on the way, so I'm really not clear to what uh, the plan is here. Perhaps a lurker contain? Try to break down this wall with lurkers? The possibility. Not a very good possibility, not a very great build, but uh, might happen. No, Spire. No third base still. Very, very interesting stuff here from Soma. Game against Bisu. Bisu seems to be adapting properly, though. He's got a cybernetic score. No Stargate just yet. There it is. Stargate does come out here. Third base about to be thrown down by Soma, but this is so late. So, so late. And I'm not sure how this is going to go for him now. He's adding on more lings as well. His drone saturation is piss poor at the moment. Three zealots going to head out on the map. This could be a big win here for Soma. He's hoping for these zealots to move out because he can completely surround and kill those if they do. Especially just three should be easy pickings here for the number of lings that have been produced. Send out a probe first. See what he can see. He's going to see these links. 
then the probe right back home. Ooh, manages to save that as well. Nicely done. Spire. As it finishes up, we'll see if Domo wants to begin producing mutas. I think that's the plan here. Nothing else really makes sense. Bisu is making cannons in his main. And oh my goodness, this Dragoon gonna get picked off here. Blocking the Zealots from running back home. But Bisu does a good job slipping out of that noose. Keeping his Dragoon alive and his few Zealots alive there as well. Now this, uh, this Corsair could get picked off by Scourge. Ooh, these two more Scourge are going to try to cut this off, and I think he will. Nicely done, Soma. Beautiful move there to kill that first Corsair, and now the threat of Mutas is double. And so, Bisu going to throw down a second Stargate. Try to mitigate that risk. The risk of an Ogre Zerg gamer play here is very high. Small army moving out on the map right now for Bisu. Wants to put on that pressure. Already a lot of links on the field though. And with a few more popping out. Maybe some Mutas as well. If Mutas pop right now, he cleans this easily. I think that's what's coming out of these eggs at this moment. Going to delay a little bit here. The ramp. As much as he can. Got to get the... Zealots to engage, then come forward with these Mitas. Try to keep as many drones alive as possible. Probably just send these drones right down to the bottom left or something, because if they run through the Zealots here, yeah, you will lose two drones because of that. Unfortunate stuff there for Soma, sending those drones in the wrong direction. Not going to keep them alive. He will clean up the army, however, and should be able to re-drone safely from here. After finishing off that army, there's only a few Corsairs in the main right now. That number is going to grow very quickly, though. So the Mutas are going to have to be really, really careful. Stick near some Scourge as well. you got to keep the Scourge there just in case the Corsairs get that moving shot going on these Mutas. Need Scourge there to push the Mutas away. To stop them from chasing and to buy a little bit of time for your mutas to escape so you got to keep those together here comes the corsairs five with plus one that's enough to two shot the scourge there's the moving shot i was talking about where are the scourge ah uh, there we go scourge engaging there right along with the mutas that drew the fire away from the scourges as they were coming forward he was man managed to connect onto a couple of those Corsairs. Now, there's still five Corsairs, so technically he could turn and fight this. As long as the Mutas aren't in range, they'll target the Scourge down and pick that off. Now, he's trying to catch up to this. Let's see how many he can pick off. Nice job. Two Corsairs go down immediately. Trying to get the muting, mu moving shot going, but the Scourge are going to come up here and engage... Now the Mutas have the moving shot, and these Corsairs are going down en masse. There's the Scourge landing on a bunch of these Corsairs. Every single one's going to go down. Beautiful play here by Soma. Completely outdoing Bisu here, who should have had air dominance. But bringing up the Scourge along with the Mutas, he's going to try to Ogre their Gamer it, jumping on top of this cannon, but two Corsairs pop out at an inopportune time. And he will be able to push that away. A little bit crazy there. From Soma trying to dive in on that. Only one sunken colony here. But with the drone micro. we be able to save that. Keep that alive. A couple of drones do go down. And the Mutas arrive to clean this up. So Soma will deal with this attack very easily. Only losing a couple of drones. You can see his saturation is getting pretty crazy. Only building a few Scourge during all of that fighting. He was able to drone up very heavily. And there should be a Mutalisk, or excuse me, a Hydralisk transition coming here soon. You can see the Evo Chamber has been added on. I don't see a Hydra Den just yet. There's another Hatchery. 
So six hatch Hydra should be coming here. Where is the Hydra den actually? That's kind of worrying here. Six hatch Hydra does amazing against a two Stargate Corsair player. Gonna find these zealots as they're moving out as well. Good timing here from Soma. There's the Scourge again. The moment that the Corsairs move to engage, the Scourge are right there to meet them. There's some Hydras, okay. Hydra's Den is hiding somewhere. There it is, beside the extractor. So he is going into six hatch Hydra now. Gonna be pumping those out en masse. Catching up to Bisu in supply now. Here's the Corsairs from multiple angles again. Bisu not able to take that fight properly. Loses a few more Corsairs and these Midas continue to be a problem here. Our Lord gonna get picked off. But uh, Soma denying this cannon could be pretty big. Yeah, he's gonna at least pull away the Corsairs here. Force them to chase these Midas around the map. Supply blocked at the moment. Soma is producing a ton of Hydras. Not able to find this. Oh, there we go. He does spot it now. It's splitting here from Soma, but he's going to lose the majority of his mutas. Actually, hold on. That was some sick, sick micro there from Soma to split those off. And uh, send them in multiple directions. So, Bisu loses track of those Hydras. All of them escape but one. Really nice play there. Now Soma gonna attack into this third base. There's no Templar that I can see just yet. There's two. Amita's not gonna be able to get on top of those. Corsairs do finish them off. Only two Templars though. Two Storms are available at the moment. So it would be a pretty good time to attack here. That window is gonna close pretty soon. Fourth base is down in the bottom right. I'm going to slowly saturate that base. And I think it's time for Bisu to just discontinue the production of Corsairs. Bisu known for being amazing with these Corsairs, for always getting damage, not able to do nearly anything this game. He loses another Corsair to some Scourge. Kind of uncharacteristic. Maybe it's Bisu... Not playing well as he usually does, or perhaps it's just Soma with his ability to micro these these scourge, kind of outdoing Bisu. I'm not sure which one it is, but Soma is taking a great lead here. He has an amazing economy. He's taking a fifth base. His drone saturation is insane. You can see like almost as many drones as probes right now and his supply is getting very high of course it's still behind the protoss player but it's pretty darn close these are some decent storms pushing everything back soma making this first engage with the hydras pretty well here pulling back slowly kiting these zealots away from the templar that he can take a better fight now lurkers are being produced and hive is on the way so transition point coming coming here for so many needs to put a few units down in the bottom right if that base gets found out could end up losing it to four or five zealots very quickly so need to keep those in a good position oh man scourge have no eyes they're not able to see this shuttle coming in but now he sees it Beautiful, picking that off. I I assume there was some Templar, maybe some Dark Templar in there as well. We'll never know. Bisu loses that shuttle. Big play there from Soma. Keeping his uh, balance in the main base. I can really throw you off once a couple of DTs get snuck into your main. And lose a lot of control of the game. Uh, if you're trying to deal with your main base and attack going on at your front at the same time. So, glad that someone was able to deal with that. Now he's got to deal with these Corsairs trying to make their way into his main base. And a fourth coming down from Bisu. This could become an insane game, guys. We're getting into some pretty crazy territory here. I love late game Protoss versus Zerg. It's so much fun. 
So interesting, so difficult to attack onto high ground against either race, so it becomes very positional. All of the units end up getting used. We end up a lot of times seeing Dark Templar. We see Dark Archons. Only thing we don't see is a Carrier, probably. Carrier and Arbiter don't come out very often, but we see just about everything else. We also see everything from the Zerg's perspective, even getting into Ultralis in the very, very late game. But of course, Defilers will come out. We're going to have Cracklings. We're going to have Lurkers. We're going to have Plague. Might even see some Guardians here this game because they are a little bit helpful when you're trying to break some of these high ground positions. But first, we're going to have to deal with this attack. Bisu looking to push up this ramp. Very tough position to break. And we're closing in on max supply for both players. Income here looking great for Soma. He's chasing around the last two Corsairs. But for the most part, he's really shut down the air army of Bisu. Not a easy feat by any means. And Bisu going to rotate here. See if he can crack into this third base. There's not a lot of defenses in this location. No lurkers on this high ground. But Soma is transferring a few over in this direction. Bisu's army is a bit split up, and Soma's going to hit this from multiple angles. Tons of links coming in. I think they do not have crack just yet. Crackling upgrade not quite completed. Here comes the Hydras from the south. Hydras from the north. Lings from both locations. Surrounding this army, picking off a ton of Dragoons. This was a great fight for Soma. A little bit surprised that Bisu wanted to tuck himself into this corner. Don't really have any way to retreat from this area and you can see some dragons are cut off in this position that's really tough for bisu to lose all of that army supply right now he needs to move to this bottom right hand corner try to deny some bases because otherwise he's going to be in a worse and worse position Oma going to begin transferring drones down here he's getting his Lurkers in position as well. Bisu going to try and take his fifth base. See if Soma has anything to say about that. His army is huge. He's completely maxed out. Going to be earning a big bank now. He's got defilers. He's got plague. Ton of lurkers are being built right now. Hydra, Ling, Lurker, Defiler. Really all you need to take out a Protoss in the late game, but sometimes it's not enough when the Protoss economy com becomes too huge and Archons become a real threat. Like, coming forward here, hitting from all angles. Soma going to completely surround this, running right in with Lurkers, just devouring this army. Lings being mixed in as well, and Lurker fire from every angle, crushing through. The Zealots and Dragoons that have been massed up so far by Bisu. Now someone going to move to cancel this fifth base. And I don't think Bisu can hold on here. Two cannons on high ground. Not going to be enough. Needed something to block that ramp, really. Soma just going to get up here. Force to cancel. And make this Bisu's problem now to deal with. Soma is everywhere on the map. He's taking 6 o'clock. He's taking the... A mineral only down in the bottom right. He's sending his overlords all over the map. You can see his vision is omnipresent. He sees everything right now. Omniscient? Um, omniscient? Omniscient vision? Is that right? I think I might have messed that up. Anyway, he can see everything. He knows all. He has a massive supply of lurkers. These Zealots are basically useless right now. He needs Archon. And he needs a ton of Dragoons, but... For now, he's going to attack towards the most densely defended area of Soma's uh, base here, which is, I mean, this, uh, this high ground mineral only. 
Um, I guess it's not as defended as that position, whatever that position is, just a random position out on the map. Um, south of Bisu's Mineral only, that's a very heavily defended position, but there doesn't have a lot of backup for these Lurkers. That is a ton of Lurkers, but with no ma backup, the uh, Storm plus Dragoon. <coughs> Excuse me. Storm plus Dragoon can actually rip through that. Ooh, plague on top of everything. This game is over, guys. Oof. Completely shredded there. Was well, quite the call for Bisu to attack into that lurker position. He might as well have attacked somewhere else. Forced the lurkers to move at least. But he attacks into that. Up losing his army and the game. Nice job by Soma knocking Bisu out. Very impressive play from him. No clapper, though, from KCM. So I'll give him one. Nice job, Soma. Great one. I'm really shocked in that last game, Bisu wasn't able to do better with his Corsairs. Feels like he's always been known for being so damn good with those. And, um... Yeah, so much is showcasing how strong Mutalisk and Scourge can be with proper micro. Every, basically what I said about having to keep the Scourge right with your Mutalisk and engage with the two of them at the same time, it's so hard to do. But Soma did it so perfectly, so perfectly, and... Um, and just crush that game. Now we've got Soma here in the top left. He's going up against Rush next. We're here on Monopoly, the three-player map, the triangular-shaped map. A lot of hard edges on this map, a lot of corners. Is a pretty cool-looking map. To be honest, I like three-player maps. A little bit better than two-player maps. They are a bit more fun to watch in a lot of different matchups, including a TVT. Can't really get to a situation with a complete map split. Um, like you can with some other maps, with some four-player maps. Um, lends itself to... More macro games, but without the without that threat of splitting the map in half, uh, two two player maps. When you know where your opponent's going to be, you end up getting a lot more crazy rushes. People doing crazy shit like barracks out in the middle of the map or uh, proxying different buildings as Protoss. Which is, is kind of annoying to me. I don't really like that style of play. It can be fun, can be exciting, especially in something like an ASL. Uh, to watch people lay it, on, lay it all on the line, kind of uh, gamble with their tournament life. Um, but not really my style of StarCraft, so three-player maps are fun for me as an observer like them the best and uh, this map looks pretty cool i mean it has a lot of uh, interesting features you know we've got the island center uh, we've got pretty wide open area around that center but it does take a long time to walk around that area so getting across the map can be kind of difficult it might have to for instance if you want to get from the right hand side of the map to the left hand side of the map and the top path is cut off. It'd take a very long time to walk around the center. Get over to that left-hand side. It cuts off counterattack possibilities a little bit. Slows them down. It's interesting. It kind of adds another layer here. That these pro gamers will have to unpack. So we'll see how these guys are going to play this out. Probably it's not going to go to a late game here. I would say between... Our two most aggressive players in their respective races. Soma, the most aggressive Zerg player we have right now, and Rush, say, uh, arguably, 
the most aggressive Terran player we have. Maybe Sharp is in the running there, but Rush is, is very heavy on the aggression. He loves to go for these early stim timings. Try to get over on the other side of the map and run through things like Dark Swarm. Try to bust positions rather than waiting and letting the Zerg take the game along. He really likes to break spots. He likes to go drop ships. He likes to try to force things as quickly as possible. Try to put the pressure on uh, to the term or to the Zerg player in the mid game rather than taking it to an ultra late. Someone like Light would rather, I think, go into those ultra late game situations on four base five base as Terran and and try to fight it out like that but rush not the case this game though he is going for a upgrade rush here he will be getting plus one as soon as possible and soma going for three hatch a little bit out of character it has been scanned he knows the timing now fourth base or third base on the way this is the fourth hatch Interesting that Soma's taking this third base so quickly. Um, with the three hatch play, generally don't get that f uh, fourth hatch so quickly. You want to kind of power up on these three hatches. Keep building links. Keep building Mutilus. Put that pressure on your opponent so that later on in the game... Um, you have a really powerful army that you can come out and fight the Terran head to head with in order to take that fourth base. He's also not taking the fourth, or sorry, take the third base. He's also not taking the third at a, another main base location, which is a little bit surprising. I would expect him to take that base down in the bottom left, but he hasn't decided to do that. Queen's Nest is on the way with a evolution chamber, so it's going to be a ultralisk rush here very interesting i'm not sure what this build is like on this map we've seen soma do a lot of ultra rush also known as crazy zerg in the past he is very very good at it mostly because his muta control is insane it gives him a lot of breathing room with the Crazy Zerg style, he just pushes the Terran player back. He really overwhelms him with his Mutalist Micro and buys himself so much time that he can just get into Ultralis quickly. He doesn't need to build a ton of sunken colonies or anything like that. He can just drone up quickly, use the Mutalis efficiently, and eventually get into those Ultras and take a win that way. So... Here he is now, dealing some damage to these Marines, and he's about to finish off this group here, but the reinforcements arrive just in time to save the medics to keep this Marine medic group alive. It was a good reinforcement timing there by Rush. Now he's got another decently sized force here in the front double starport on the way it's going to be full-on skt style here from rush and i'm not sure if that's the right call against what he's going up against um tank time is can be really good against a, an ultra ultra rush excuse me because you're not going to have defiler you're not going to have Lurker, so the gen the big problem with those timing attacks with the tank, uh, siege mode, timing attack. Whoa, he's actually got armor here as well. I just noticed that armor on the Mutilus is pretty different. Um, it's not meta here at all, so it's interesting to see him going for that. Um, what I was trying to say though is that uh, the, the big problem with the tanks. Timing attacks is that, of course, Mutalist can pick them off, but also that by the time they arrive, most of the time, the Zerg player will have Defiler and Lurker, so he can just throw down a Dark Swarm with that Consume and just drop a Lurker 
and then boom, they have the control. They can push back that tank push, and then you, you're, you're kind of out of options. You've got to find another way. Whoa, this is Satchery here on the right-hand side. That's hilarious. Also, Rush scanned the third base there. He knows about that now. Um, so he can try to contest that. This base is right behind him right now, right behind his army. He just doesn't know about it. And if this gets up, Rush was going to be kicking himself after this game. Um, all that someone needs to do is keep a base hidden on the map and start to mine a fourth gas. And his crazy Zerg is going to get insane. It's going to be insane Zerg here in a second if he actually manages to get that up. Um, transferring some more drones here. All he needs to do is just build an extractor over there in the top right and start mining that gas. And you can see he's already got 800 gas in the bank. That's all going to be dumped into Ultralis in a moment here. The moment that that gas disappears, you know where it's going to be going. A bunch of overlords popping out right now. He's preparing for the a glut of supply that's going to come here with the ultralisks being produced now there is also a defiler nest coming up that's a little bit surprising to me um i guess he wants to get defilers out here as well maybe for some plague pretty tough to fight with the uh, ultra Oh my god, this... Oh god, this Irradiate is insane. This Irradiate's doing so much damage. The pull there was horrible by Soma. And uh, Rush is going to hit a timing here uh, with all these... Oh my god, with all these Medalists dead, he is just going to lose right now. The Ultras are popping out, but it's too little too late. They don't have their armor. There's only two of them, so they get gunned down. Rush going to run over this. GG, wow. That was a surprising result there. Um, failure from Rush to pull his Mutilus out. That irradiated Mutilus basically killed his entire Mutilus flock. He should have been able to micro there um, with that group of Mutas and uh, buy some time for his Sunkins to finish, but he just wasn't able to do so. And he gets knocked out. Damn. That was a crazy play from Rush. Finishes him off before the ultra build gets going and now We've got one of each one player from each race left over. It's just snow and soul key in the background here guys We're gonna go into our second to last game. We will be getting all eight games this week That's some good news for you jump into our next game. All right guys welcome to day three or is it four? Of trying to finish this video up next we've got snow versus rush snow down in the bottom left corner of vermeer rush in the top right vermeer an excellent new map asl ladder or map pool excuse me very wide open map with a ton of ramps going all the way around heard a lot about it from the Hastosis duo. Talked about this map being developed by a pro player or with input from a pro, pro player of each race trying to make a polypoid quality map and it's looking to be that way right now. It's such a cool map. It's very wide open. It lends itself to extremely balanced play long macro games are a feature of this map and i'm loving it so far hope this does make its way into the ladder pool i do plan to start laddering again at some point need to get a better setup here though first i'm still playing on a laptop and um my wrists are suffering, so I'll have to get a better setup at some point. Get things properly situated, ergonomically uh, set up here so that I don't have those terrible wrist pains and 
can sort of enjoy the ladder a little bit more. But I'll definitely be getting back into it in the future. For now, though, trying to catch up with my YouTube videos. Man, it is really a busy month right now. Putting in a ton of overtime. And uh, planning a lot of fun stuff for the weekends. If you want to see what I've been up to, you can definitely check that out. Links in the description. It's like snow. Going for a pretty normal opener here. He skips a zealot after spotting his opponent in a cross map position. Just going to get that Nexus out real quick. Skipping range as well. Very interesting. Looks like Rush will get in here and scout that. No, not leaving his Dragoon on the ramp. A little bit, little bit weird there. A little bit strange. He decided to allow that to get in because this is a ton of information. Rush saw the buttocks. He also saw the lack of range there. He knows exactly what's coming. Starts a starport immediately. A good reaction here from Rush. He will have that Wraith for the defense. And he's going to be completely safe back at home. He knows a bunker is going to keep him alive here. Puts that Vulture out on the map as well. He sends it in the, the direction there towards the left kills that probe and then continues in <laughs> towards the left there for a little bit longer until the probe's dying vision disappears and then he doubles back and goes around the right hand side very smart play from rush pylon out here in the front snow going to use that just for the vision making sure that he has an eye on any incoming vultures from that right hand side got mines out here on the map now snow gonna have to hold position with those dragons try not to get hit by any of these mines while he's waiting for his first observer and that was a very quick observer <clears throat> getting that prioritizing that observer over any sort of range over any sort of pressure Gonna throw down a third nexus here. Snow playing a very passive game, but a very economically greedy game. For sure. Wants to propel himself into a good position here in the mid game. A great way to play when you are going up against the Terran player on this map in cross map position there's plenty of room to take bases it's a very long push distance unlikely that rush is going to want to do a push anytime soon here he is going to try to get some harassment here in the natural there are dragoons spread out all over the main and that right now Instead of making that Wraith, he decided to go for the dropship. Let's see if it pays off. One Vulture in the natural. Going to get a couple of kills here. Dragoons in the main should be getting pulled down to deal with this attack. Looks like a few more probes will fall. No pulling the probes away, but not quite far enough. About four or five more probes do end up falling. But overall, a decent hold there from Snow and a relatively successful drop by Rush. His dropship did manage to escape there. It's headed back home right now. He may be able to use that later on to pick up some tanks. Got to put that in a location to deny a base. So always a good tool to have. Like... Forge plus Citadel on the way right now. Rush with just a single tank here. He's being very greedy as well. Picking up very quickly. Getting into all of his upgrades. He knows he's not under any pressure. Any obligation to build additional defensive structures. So he's taking all the liberties he can right now. 
Making sure to add on his factories as early as possible. One vulture going to sneak in here. Try to get another kill. Trades itself for a single probe. Not the worst trade in the world, but definitely wanted some more out of that. Templar Archives. I don't see a starport just yet. Is this going to be a speed shuttle game from Snow? Yes, he definitely has a time to get into Arbiter here. Wow. That observer right on top of the dropship. So Snow absolutely knows that this can be coming. He has his dragoons waiting and ready here at that third base. See if Rush decides to go through with this harassment. It could be the end of this, sh this dropship if he doesn't turn it around quick enough. Here we go. There is quite a bit of space here. This will probably end up getting shot down. Oh, there we go. Rush loses the dropship. About four vultures inside as well. So, pretty rough. Tough loss there for Rush. Unlikely we'll see another dropship this game. Going into science facility now and that third base. Rush getting ready to take that as Snow grabs his fourth. Third base on this map, not too hard to hold. Reminiscent of some of the other maps we have in the pool right now. Your third base is a little distance from your natural, but not too far. It's also pretty easy to block off here. So Rush going to start throwing down some supply depots in that area, making sure to clog that up so that any zealot attacks be slowed down, made more difficult for the Protoss. He's even adding on some structures here near the front of the natural just to draw some Dragoon fire, just to slow things down. In the Protoss advance, if he does decide to attack that position, it will be harder to make progress through that area. A little skirmishing back and forth here. Rush trying to get some well-positioned mines out on the map, but having a difficult time. Snow is spread out all over the place. You can see his spread. Look at all the red dots on the map. He's really spreading himself out. Making sure that no vultures slip by here. And a lot of zealots are present. Rush needs to add on quite a few more turrets here. Slow down these shuttles. Otherwise, he may end up getting broken by snow. See, before this attack occurs, 172 supply to 132. Looks like snow is about to pull the trigger. Let's see how this ends up going. There's a lot of structures here in the way. There's the floating barracks. The supply depot there as well. That turret, very well positioned. Here's the first storm. Storm on two tanks. Second storm, going to clean up some of that. Nice storm. That third storm, amazing. Fourth storm as well. Landing on a bunch of these tanks. But the tanks in the background going to force everything away here. Dragoons. Dealing a lot of damage to these structures. You can see how impactful adding some of those structures on in the front is for the Terran defense. It really slowed him down there. So uh, those Dragoons killed the supply depot and nearly killed those barracks. So just think about how many shots from the Dragoons were wasted on meaningless buildings. Uh, in that position, that very uh, important attack there from Snow. Now, Snow, he doesn't... This isn't his total plan here. He wasn't desperate to end the game with that attack. He's taking another base in the bottom right. But he did manage to do a decent amount of reduction of the number of tanks in this game right now. He's kind of slowed down... The push timing from Rush was getting pretty high in supply. Now he's been knocked back down. 
Just that 133 supply here, adding on his fourth base, his fourth command center. Snow taking this main base. We'll have to see whether Snow adds on some care or some arbiter tech here shortly. Rush gonna dive in on some probes in the center right, but Cannon cleans that up quickly. I guess every vulture in that group was pretty badly damaged there, so unfortunately not able to get many kills with that attack this vulture attack might be different though this is a lot of high health vultures they're gonna run right in here start to deal some damage yeah that's not a wall that snow just set up there so quite a few probes are gonna go down this is some good harassment from rush a great time to harass with those vultures he's not planning to push for quite a while here he's really banking on Taking this fourth base and extending the game out to an even longer, more grindy game here. Of daring the Protoss to attack into this new fresh fourth base. We'll see how that goes. Snow is heading up with his maxed army. 200, 200 supply is available here for the Protoss. We'll see if he can crack through. Rush relocating a ton of his tanks he knows the attack is coming from this left side let's see how this goes snow pushing forward a couple of zealots taking the majority of the hits with those oh nice pick off there on the shuttle but some equally good storms there on those tanks in the back wow two storms end up taking out four tanks another goes down in the front no, still with a very high supply. A lot of his army was not with that attack. A lot of his army was actually down here in the middle. So he will be ready shortly here to follow up this attack. Just needs another round or two of zealots to pop out. Then he could continue this push. No, taking even more bases in the bottom right. He might want to think about starting to take the top left as well that's the next main base position that can be taken by snow taking both main bases gives you a lot of play in this matchup as the protoss it allows you to rally out of multiple locations and flank big armies of terran from multiple sides so can be a huge benefit so far he's not sending anything up there he's just ready to do this attack again 199 supply let's see how this goes archons heading up the attack here running forward eating up a lot of that damage from the tanks good storms here these tanks are so clumped up he really needs a good storm on that location but the zealots are really jumping on top of this i'm not really clear what's going on in the center of the map snow has a whole bunch of dragoons over in the middle of the map here there there are they're heading up now, but it feels like they were forgotten during this attack. Very strange stuff. Couple more tanks moving up. Storm's gonna land on all these tanks. Beautiful storms on the tanks here. You get one more storm. No. Forced to make an Archon. These five dragoons do manage to make into their make it into the fourth base and will start to pick off some of these turrets and catch the reinforcements here of rush beautiful storm there on these reinforcements just cleaning them up very nicely Ooh, really really good stuff here by snow slowing down this this reinforcement wave so much getting even more kills on the SEVs. it looks like rush is gonna save this but is he too far behind now we're at only a hundred supply more storms on this army and only a couple of scvs at this base now are left alive reinforcements are coming up here the supply is pretty low good placement for this shuttle just leaving that behind you will have to build some turrets to deny any further storm drops Rush is barely hanging on at this moment. Snow is just so huge on the map. His macro is crazy. He extended that supply lead to around 60 supply advantage now. 70 supply advantage now. So his army is massive in comparison 
what Rush has at this moment. Good pickups there on a couple of those Templar. But these Templar on the right will be able to throw down good storms to clear these tanks. It's like snow will be forced back in the end, though. Rush has secured four bases. I mean, there still is, despite all of the good moves from snow, despite all of the good fights from snow so far, there still is that looming 3-3 mech upgraded army kind of in the background here that could eventually come out and attack if it manages to reach around 160 supply let's see if snow allows that to happen though we we'll be throwing down some good storms here on these front tanks bunch more tanks moving forward and sieging up and snow absolutely has to evacuate this position with no more zealots left over to tank this damage these dragons would get absolutely melted so he has to run away Start to refill his supply here with those zealots. Get together another wave, but each time he takes these fights, I think we might have 3-3 here now. Or rush, or at least very, very close. 3-2 is done, so... These fights are going to look worse and worse for Snow every single time, but his economy is just insane. He's got so much economy here that I don't know if Rush can realistically move out here and actually take down all of these bases on just four bases. He is like, what, six bases behind the Protoss right now? Looks like Snow wasting a few units into that third. Trying to pick off one or two things, but ends up losing quite a few zealots. Of course, he will remax again instantly. I feel like this is the moment as Snow when you should just throw down four or five Stargates. Throw down four or five Stargates, start making carriers the moment your next army dies. The moment you take another decent fight, just start making carriers. Your, the Terran opponent is like... He's not going to move out for a long time here. He knows his opponent is maxed out. Um, taking another base is going to be incredibly hard. Here comes the shuttle with the storm. Oh my god, the storm. What a storm it is. So many SCVs get picked off there. And Rush dropping down again. 150 supply is having such a hard time here. Snow's done a great job constantly harassing throughout. He's moving his army back and forth. He's been maxed out for quite a long time. Waiting for Rush to actually do something. His bank is insane right now. I think if he took a couple more gas geysers, that might do him good. Start throwing down those starports, as I said. He still doesn't have shuttle speed, even though he's going for this style, uh, which is typically known for um, the Protoss player having that shuttle speed. It's kind of a really important part of this build, actually. So I'm really surprised that he doesn't have that. Here's the EMP. So many tanks and a huge clump here. The storms are insane. These tanks, about six on top of each other there, getting stormed down. But Snow loses the majority of his army. Being forced back here, dropping down briefly to about 140 supply. He's back up to nearly max almost instantaneously as he hits all those gateways. Stabbing that Z button with his index finger, I'm sure. Lifting off your command center, floating it out to a fifth base. Rush is in desperation mode here. He's got to make this work. If this attack fails, if this army you see on screen gets wiped out, Rush is done for. He's going to try and take out the top left. Maybe he can split this map in half and take it to a hyper late game where there is a possibility of winning this. 
However, it's going to take a lot here. He has to stop this counterattack. Snow bringing up his army here, but the tanks are already back and in position. Rush doing an excellent job here of rotating his army. The moment he sees Snow going for it, this counterattack, he immediately brings back the majority of his army and clears that a position. Now, Snow going to try take out this position over here. Oh, another nice storm. Picking up a couple of tanks. And this position on the left-hand side will be cleaned up by Snow. Like, quite a few tanks are going to go down here. And Rush dropping down to 125 supply. That is dismally low. In, when compared to Snow's 190. This is a... I gotta say it again. A crazy desperate situation here for Rush. He's just now going to start mining here at his fifth base. Holding that position is of utmost importance because he is crazy close to mining out on his four bases that he'd managed to secure up to this point. Now, he set up a wall of tanks here on the left-hand side. How much does he have back at home, though? What is his presence in the natural? How many tanks does he have? How many vultures does he have? It looks like just one vulture in this location. That's going to get cleaned up very quickly. A few tanks here. The natural and a lot of units being brought back from the front. They're going to head towards this right-hand side. Nice D matrix there on the front tank. Ooh, storm here on the unseized tanks. Looks like Snow just going to be able to run over a lot of this. As I say that, the tanks siege up once again and start to splatter these dragoons. However... This is great, great trading for Snow. Any Dragoons he can trade out for tanks is amazing right now. See, his supply will rocket back up. GG is called Rush Taps Out. Even though he had that additional base, he knew that that army being taken down, that was the last army he could put together safely and that Snow was going to continue to grow. He's going to continue to field massive armies and attack in multiple locations. Just not able to hold on there. Rush taps out. Like we're going to have Snow versus Soul Key in our final game. Let's get into that one. Okay, here we go. Final game of week four. 2022 season one KCM. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. I know there's a ton good Starcraft content out there right now. I've been watching a lot of it myself. The ASL going strong. So I do appreciate coming along, checking this out. Enjoying it so far. If you want to help me out, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button as well. Comment down below. Who do you think is going to win this season of ASL? My money is on Soul Key down in the bottom left. This man has been impressing me over and over again with his great play in KCM. Really like this player a lot. Previous GSL champion. An amazing StarCraft 2 player now in StarCraft 1. Trying to make a name for himself. In my mind, he already has, but it'd be nice to get an ASL victory top that off playing here on the metaverse this is a great map guys i've been watching more and more games on here and every time i do i think this is a really cool map has a lot of interesting uh, features here i love the the new ramps as well the little small uh space ramps those were never a thing in original starcraft reverse ramps were made up of regular ramps just with the tiles kind of uh messed up in a weird buggy way that made them completely unplayable um and really truly buggy as hell but you can see here we have those tiny small space ramps now and they are 
Uh, not buggy. They seem to work fine. And they look great. I mean, it's a little tiny ramp. Pretty much the same size as a normal ramp on any other tile set. Base tile sets, the, the normal ramps, uh, the old Brood War ramps were um, huge for whatever reason. I don't know why they decided to make the space tile set ramps so much bigger, but uh, that was just kind of um, a weird tweak, a weird flare, I guess in the uh, programming. And I, I, you know, I can't be mad at that because a lot of those weird uh, extra things that the Blizzard programmers threw in uh, turned out pretty cool. Like the 50% mischance, those type of things turned out pretty sweet, made this game what it is today. Ooh, Hydralis Den, so a lot of pressure here coming from Soul Key. This game could be super quick. I'm sitting here commentating as though it's going to last forever, but Solky putting on a heck of a lot of pressure with these these links. He's gonna send some links out and move around, try to get inside the main. Nice blocking there by Snow with the probes, making sure that can't happen. Um, this is a Cybernetic score. Whoa, I thought that was a Forge, but it's not. Forge is not done, and Solky is. About to start making Hydras here. He is going for Hydra Bus. He has the Hydra's Den. Really shocked here um, that he's just got a Cybernetic score. This is like a mini build. And um, I hope there's a Forge in the main, man, because otherwise he's just going to die. Okay, there's a Forge. And this Link does manage to make it inside, so he will find out about that. I'm going to finally add on some cannons here, it looks like. And these two overlords here, I feel like that's a pretty big tell from Soul Key that he's actually going to go for this Hydralis te uh, tech because you don't really want to keep your overlords around uh, if you're not going for that. You want to send your overlords back home, keep them safe so that when the Corsairs come, you have enough time to build those scourge and try to uh, to hold on against that attack or to, to to keep your overlords alive having overlords right here in front of the natural it telegraphs that you're about to do an attack basically that you're about to uh, come up and hit with these hydras he finally does spot that another cannon comes down let's see if he can hold on here he's got quite a few zealots but uh, Zealots can be kited very, very easily. Um, he's not going to lose his Forge because he doesn't have that Forge in the front. Cybernetic score will end up going down, it looks like. Um, now we're going to play a little bit of footsies here. Like a uh, temple going down in the back there. That is a stack temple, if you're wondering. So there's uh, quite a lot of work to be done there by those links if they want to eventually take out that wall and, and make a path there snow he's finished up his cannons now and he's spotting out that soul key is rebuilding uh, and uh re-droning here all right maybe i shouldn't say re-droning but s switching back into droning Switching back now into a macro game. He's not going to try to break these cannons. Although he would have had Snow not built enough of them. Would have absolutely tried to bust this down. Um, instead, Soul Key, he's just going to chill here. He got those few buildings there in the front. Um, he's going to take that win. And he's going to transition this game into a long macro game. Which is, uh, frankly, a relief. I do want to see a nice long game here between these two players. Uh, didn't want to see Snow or Silky die right away here. So I'm uh, glad that Silky pulls back here. That Snow manages to survive. Looks like a couple overlords will get killed off in the front. That's a feature of this type of rush. You do need the overlords. 
at the front here. Otherwise, a single DT can just end your plan. But then again, having those overlords right there does make it easy for the Protoss player to just uh, kill those off with the Corsairs. Now, Dolky's decided to do something interesting. He's taken another natural there in the top left and he's turtling it up very strongly this is a play that we used to see a lot out of zerg players especially players like larva really love to build a defensive position like this to turtle up super hard against protoss and take a free fourth base in the other main once the natural was secured, it looks like Snow going to react to this by throwing down a very fast natural. Or third base, excuse me. Very, very quick third base there from Snow. Going to be getting ready to take this into a macro game really quickly. You can see Soul Key taking his fourth. I think that... Killing this temple might actually be more impactful than it seems right now because you know that Sulky will be taking that island base here relatively soon. That's pretty much a free base if you uh, get a probe back there, put a bunch of cannons up on that high ground, kill off that little, uh, what's it called? A power generator or whatever it is you can take that base and easily hold that location it's super hard to to break in there but Loki kind of preempting that killing those temples there he's setting up some lurkers I think he's building a lurker in that location as well it's going to take down the Zelnaga temple I think he might be a little bit mind gaming himself though because Taking down these temples, I think he thinks that Snow has already taken this base, and <laughs> Snow absolutely has not. He is, um, <laughs> yeah, he's he's taking this base on the front. I guess this is still okay. Solki can maybe take out this El Naga Tower Temple. Oh no, he's not gonna do that. Um, it looked like he was going to, but he doesn't do that. He's gonna walk all the way back around and uh, leave this area. Um, <laughs> it's actually kind of funny that uh, he was he, he seemed pretty sure that there was a base over there, but um, turns out there's not. Now, a nice surround here by Snow. He's going to get a couple, three Hydras, actually, which shouldn't happen because the Hydras can absolutely run away. Um... But he does get a few of those. He's going to check out the main base here. See if it's safe to bring a shuttle in. Looks like it is safe. So probably the shuttle is going to be coming next. There's a Reaver already. Wow, Snow. Bringing out the Reaver. It's very common to see Reavers in a hyper late game. Rodos versus Zerg. But bringing it out after just a third base is kind of cool. Actually, I like it. I like getting the Reavers early. Reavers are so strong against pure Hydra and also, of course, against Lurkers and any sort of turtle position. So, um, going for this Reaver early, it lends so much power to his next attack. When he actually decides to attack, two Reavers are going to be present and that will be amazing for cracking into one of these two base uh, natural locations. That Solki has so diligently fortified here. Those uh, sunken colonies aren't going to do diddly squat against a couple of Reavers shooting them. So, really like this play. Wow, that's so much. Oh my goodness, that is a ton of sunken colonies, man. Solki really maybe over committing to sunkens here. That is just so many sunkens. And, of course, two Reavers, they do not care about sunkens. Oh, 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 oh
That was a really cool move there by Sulky. If he could have picked that off, it would have changed the game completely. It would have made him have such a better position. But here comes the Reavers now. They're going to start shooting. Okay, they're not going to start shooting. I'm going to back up a little bit here. Try to keep these Reavers alive. One Reaver does go down. Wow, nice pick off there. They will get the shuttle as well. Ooh, that's huge. Sulky doing a great job of uh, limiting this this army here. By picking off that early Reaver, I mean, he has done himself a huge service. Um, his sunken colonies are so much more powerful if he manages to uh, kill off those Reavers. Another base going up in the top right from Snow during all this, but Sulky trying to make a surround happen. Um, going to be kind of cut off by Snow's reinforcements. Now he's trying to break through here with this Reaver. It's going to take a long time, though, with only one Reaver. And the Hydras can always run out here and deal some damage to this. Taking a little bit more damage there. Reaver struggling to path towards this sunken colony. Finally will get the pathing right and start to hit this. There is a couple of observers here present. Oh, another couple more hits, and this Reaver only has 16 HP left. Two or three more Hydras running out and attacking that should be enough to finish it off. There is also a flanking force here from Solki running up. He kills the Reaver. That's it. Snow doesn't have any more power to siege down this position. He'll have to dive in with Dragoons if he wants to break that, so that's just not going to happen, I think. Couple more high uh, high temple are getting picked off after throwing down their storms. And Sulky continues to hold on here. Snow taking bases in the upper right. I think it's time to go into a split map situation here. It's time to just stop trying to break the Zerg. Wait for him to take additional bases and then look to take those out. For now, Sulky has Defiler Tech. He's got Lurkers. He will be moving out on the map a little bit here. No, with the nice roaming army. Looking for things to pick off, but you just cannot push into that here as Snow. There's just no way, man. There's no way you're getting in there, so... No, I think he's got to change his strategy up here. I mean, take out some more, or get some more bases. Get that upper right-hand corner base. Start putting Reavers at every location. Reavers and Templar do not care about Dark Swarm. They will absolutely crush everything under Dark Swarm. He can take the center right. He can take, of course, top right. He can uh, take maybe potentially bottom center and top center. Um, those are two possible bases as well, but getting in here, destroying this, this, uh, kind of turtled position, no freaking way, man. It's so, so nasty. There's just, there's no goddamn way you're going to be able to break this. Like some cracklings coming out. They're going to deal a little damage. Scourge making their way up here. Dealing with the, that shuttle. The more Dark Swarms coming down, and it looks like that uh, Defiler will die. No, no, um, no Plague just yet. And the Dark Swarm starting to work a little bit against Sulky here, because the Sunken Colonies can't hit those Dragoons back there. But uh, only one Reaver left. He manages to take out one, so the surrounding army coming down here as well. The Dark Swarm does wear off on that one position. And it looks like this Reaver about to die. Ooh, only 42 HP left. It does manage to ha hang on for now. Like Solki gonna potentially attack into that base that's out on the map there. That uh, third base of Snow looks like he won't. Just gonna back off for now. Snow has made a little progress over at the natural. But he's still very far away from breaking that location. No Reaver here in the upper right. He does have a lot of units moving towards that location, though. Let's see. 
Oh, he's just backing off. Is there a drop prepared? Potential for a drop here. Looks like he's found a observer. Deal with that first. Fix that off. Now gonna get ready for this drop, it looks like. Yeah, he is loading up, but Snow is ready here. Snow is coming up to meet this. Oh, no, 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 Sulky, do not lose these drops. Oh, looks like he does lose one Overlord. Now he's gonna get in here and drop with three. Not very much supply here in these Overlords, so probably won't be able to do much damage. There's the first storm. The Lurker's gonna run around here behind these uh, minerals here. But there's no uh, probes just yet to kill, so just going to be a little bit of a harassment tactic for now. These Templars will eventually clean this up. No going to deal with this without much more problem. This attack here at the natural that's been going on for at least a couple of minutes. Now finally going to be cleaned up, it looks like, by Soul Key. Wow, he's getting great trade. Snow is hitting these... Lurkers with scarabs and those storms as well. Now Sulky's getting into the phase of the game where he can just send lings absolutely everywhere, just spamming out lings here. The crackling's gonna deal very nicely with these dragons, just crushing through them, being so cost efficient. And this is a problem now for Snow, who just you can't really build dragons anymore. There's already cracklings, there's already Defilers out on the map with that Dark Swarm. So, what is the point of a Dragoon at this point? They really don't fight very well anymore. So, time to switch into a pure Archon, Zealot, Templar, and potentially some Reavers mixed in there as well. That's the only reasonable late game army here for Protoss now. Looks like. Protoss pushing through the middle. Bottom center. Ooh, big drop coming into the main base here. Where is this? Oh no, it's actually headed to the uh, center left position. This could destroy this base, actually. This could be a denial. And I think it will be. That's a lot of zealots. A great move here by Snow. Sulky just not prepared at all. Only a single sunken does nothing against this. Looks like some Ling's going to pop out and start to deal with the Zealots, but still this Reaver going to do amazing with that splash damage. Shuttle makes his way back home. Looks like a couple of shuttles may have been picked off there. Nice job picking off that Reaver. Sulky stopping that from firing one more time, and he will lose his hatchery. Snow. Doing a good job here so far of slowing down Sulky, of cutting off his ability to earn money in this game. Nice pick off on that shuttle. So hard to keep a shuttle alive here against Scourge when you don't have those very important Corsairs to keep that alive now. This is a ton of Lurkers all stacked up right there. I would be super afraid of storms right now because I think you can hit like four or five lurkers with one storm when they're stacked up that closely. Um, looks like he's not getting that just yet. We've still got the uh, defiler. Finally, a plague comes down. I think this is the first plague we've seen so far. Coming out with the uh, Ling and Hydra. Going to try to jump on these Reavers. They are very squishy with only two HP. No, nearly about to break into this fresh base location. Sulky jumping on a worthless base here. He does get stormed away. This army is becoming way too powerful for Snow. He's still ahead in supply, but he has so much of that supply in Archon's Templar and Reaver right now. It's insane. He's going to dive here into the main. Let's see how this goes. Bunch of Zealots being dropped off and a Reaver. This Reaver adds so much uh, value to this army here. Just able to pick off these Lings en masse. 
give a ton more value to these zealots just able to fight very well now sulky does react very quickly he clears out that base that's really really good for him because he cannot be allowing your tech to get reset here once again sulky with the lings running into this natural here reaver without any scarabs just going to fire incredibly slow as those scarabs are built another base in this location here soul key gonna get denied though reaver plus storm killing off quite a few of those drones and again slowing down the economy here for soul key he is growing slowly out on the map the 12 o'clock is now being taken he has this base here at the 11. Another location being taken by Solki, and Snow's starting to run out of places to grow on the map here. He does have a lot of bases. I mean, he still hasn't taken center right, which seems like the obvious next base to take, but he hasn't been able to snag that base yet. Now, finally, Solki pushing back this army. I mean, three Archons plus a Reaver, somehow, Solki manages to surround that and actually push everything back from that location, which is pretty darn surprising to me. Um, look at this, five Archons versus a bunch of Cracklings. Is he going to kill anything here? I don't think so. The Archon with 10 kills, just absolute savagery there. Like another drop coming through, and I don't think Sulky's any more prepared than the last time. I mean, there's a few more lings here, but this is going to get off, and this is going to be a ton of Reaver Archon Zealot. It should be able to break this base. Sulky just going to abandon ship here, let that go down, send in the lings to clean up afterwards. But where can he mine from right now? I he can't really mine from that 5 o'clock position. He can't really mine from 6 o'clock either right yet. I guess he could send those around to 12 o'clock. Maybe he can uh, reclaim this base and start to mine from there again. But he cannot mine here. That's a death trap there for drones. So um, another couple of shuttles heading up to 12 o'clock. There is a, an opening there where he could send his army through to actually keep this alive. But will he do so? Will he actually send those through? Ooh, nice job picking off that shuttle once again. Drops here being used to pick off the uh, sh pick off the Reaver. I think that was a really good play there by Sulky. Picking that off and more units being shuttled up here into the 12 o'clock. He picks off that base and now he's behind the mineral patches once again and sulky can't mine from this location he is gonna attack though over here to the one o'clock storms being thrown down that's a ton of storms but there's still a few too many hydras and lings are being rallied up so he should potentially be able to break through this location last dark storm comes down a lurker gonna burrow as well and the Lings just keep on coming here. Keep on fighting forward. Snow going to lose this base, it looks like. And with it, potentially the hope for this game. I mean, he is taking center right. But he is mining very little at this point. All he has is the upper right two bases. And Sulky is spotting out the center right now. If he can deny this base, I think he's going to win this game 100%. Just needs to stop that from going up. Get a drop over in that location. He should be able to clean up this game. Sulky so close right now. To finishing this one off. Snow trying to hang on. Nice plague there by Sulky. Gonna spread out these lurkers. Make sure they don't get killed easily by a few... Um, Templar there by a few storms. Reaver plus Archon. The dream team here. Not going to be able to make the dream work. Does end up getting picked off by masses of lings. The <laughs> lurker here up in the top corner. Trying to get some kills there, but not going to happen. 
Bingle Zealot does pick that off. Sulky gonna have to find another way to slow down this Protoss economy. I think the answer here is just attack that center right hand base, get a huge drop together, and just ma just just destroy that, and you should be good, man. These are about to mine out. Those two bases in the top right, they've been up for a very long time. Deal with that base in the center right, and he should be fine. He's taking 12 o'clock. He's taking 6 o'clock. Um, his economy here is secure right now. Could even potentially take the middle. I mean, it might be kind of a pipe dream, but that would be amazing as well. Oh, the shuttle scourge action. Just get this shuttle, kill it off. He needs to keep this base alive. Ooh, nice storm there. Oh, he does get that. Oh, huge storm. Nine kill Templar. Oh, that was a massive, massive storm. Really, really nice play there by Snow. Trying, fighting back his hardest here in this game. Attempting to keep himself alive to keep himself relevant just by slowing down the zerg economy he's done a great job i mean there is a lot of drones though still left over the center is being taken wow we haven't seen it yet so far on this map but the center actually going to be taken this game by soul key what a legend Sending through a ton of units. He is completely maxed out here. Look at all the drones being transferred to the north as well. That looks so good for him here. Feels like he is in a great position. Sending up all of his forces to the top right. He wants to break this spot. Is this a, an overextension though? Seems like there's maybe just not quite enough here for snow to hold on if he had a couple more reavers maybe you could keep this alive he just running out of storms here there's only a couple more left that reaver is going to fall has 20 kills though and there's no more uh hydras to reinforce this army i mean another wave of ling hydra is about to come out but the lurkers can't do it themselves they gonna need more help oh there we go two more reavers pop out of that shuttle and that's what i'm talking about we got more reavers coming up here they're gonna be able to easily clear the links that are sent up to this top right location along with the archon support i mean that is nearly unbreakable there you really need some good plagues and some hydras running up in tandem with those um with those lings to actually pick something off now here's a big drop drop here in the center right storms coming down there's going to be the reavers being transferred great opportunity here to dive on these on these shuttles and now oh my god all the reavers archons are kind of stuck in that uh center right base maybe he can make an attack go uh, on the top right now that there's not too many reavers in that location it's bringing everything together now nearly maxed out once again sulky i mean this army here is is kind of wasting its time right at this point uh, what is this small snow army doing here when the center base has been taken uh, i mean he's denying that for now but all sulky needs to do is just get himself together he should be able to deal with that nice plague there doesn't get a lot of zealots but at least he does get the reaver with the plague it's very valuable another defiler running out here unfortunately not enough energy to get that plague off could have gotten a money plague though looks like snow gonna try and push this location can he actually get up here i mean soul key is totally maxed out he should have an insane amount of units coming towards this location he is sending those up now um just huge waves of zergling hydra making their way across the map at the moment here comes some scourge gonna pick off this shuttle as well flank on this army he's gonna completely destroy this last sort of uh outpost here for snow this last sort of army 
gets picked off and now there's no reaver here in the top right all he needs is a dark swarm and a gang of lings to finish this off reavers i guess are still possibly trapped in the center right there's a reaver looks like another shuttle did manage to come up but it gets picked off immediately and those two reavers go down instantly without any support Soul key, a cheeky expand right in front of Soul, uh, Snow's face there, trying to take that base. Six o'clock is still up for grabs at the moment. I'm really surprised that Snow hasn't taken that base yet because he does have this kind of outpost of units, this uh, really weird army down there kind of denying mining for Soul key. But it could be doing two things at once. It could be defending a base at six o'clock and denying the mining there. Um, two things are possible at the same time, of course. But uh, he hasn't done that so far, and he is running low on the money. He's trying to break this center as kind of like a last resort. But why not take 6 o'clock? What is this army doing here? This is, this, is, <laughs> this is a little bit silly. I mean, he's focusing super hard right now on actually microing this, and I know it is very difficult micro to take care of. He's being completely surrounded here. His army is going to be killed still a few more storms left over he's doing the absolute best he can but too many links man way too many links coming up there engulfing that army completely surrounding and destroying snow's last bastion there in the center this kind of final assault of that middle base there now dropping below 150 supply soul key is well ahead at this point but he is also running low on money i mean he has center left and he has a fresh base at top center plus the middle so i guess that's still enough mining to draw this out until soul key kind of fizzles here on just the one base he has in the center right um but it's still a little bit scary i mean if snow really was able to get the six o'clock he might be able to hang on long enough and drag this out long enough uh, with really cost efficient units to take a win here i guess it's just not going to happen though eventually finally this army down here will be taken down we'll lose this archon here it's a zero kill archon now it's got three but it does end up falling falling this uh high templar gonna fall and now that base can start to mine and now soul key just has way too much income he's gonna send some drones down there and he is just going to mine like crazy keep his supply high he's gonna get a huge bank as well Ooh, two reavers but the reavers pop out on the wrong side of this army unfortunately Really wanted to have the Archons pop out on the other side of the mineral patches. Have the Archon or the Reaver pop out on the the left side of those mineral patches. It just didn't work out though. And he pushes the drones away for a moment. But that's all he's going to get here. This, this area is still being controlled I guess by snow for now. But I'm so shocked he didn't want to take the 6 o'clock. He didn't even really try to set that up. I saw pylon go down in that location one time Ooh, huge storms killing off a ton of drones but it's just really not what he needs right now he needs to destroy bases he needs to get a base up of his own killing drones is not going to help him to win this game it's just going to really delay the inevitable here which is a protoss defeat looks like we're going to have a uh a zerg winner this week guys no you guys are all shocked Ooh, that actually goes through nice it's a little bit surprising that the uh, the scarab can actually make it through the left hand side of the mineral patches there um that means that it would make it through even if that was a fresh base um not just if one of the minerals was mined out nice storm drop once again Again, I feel a little, uh, a bit too little too late. But he's going to keep on harassing here, doing his best. 
He is still mining here in the top right and in the center right. So he can continue to build up his army. As time goes on here though, it's going to get worse and worse for him. Really down to an incredibly low supply here against Zerg at the moment. Bulky trying to figure out what he actually needs, I think, to end this game because it's been just such a slugfest here. I guess Ling is the best option because that seems to be all he's building at the moment. Just pure Ling. It doesn't really trade well, but it does get the job done eventually. If you uh, have enough, if you can surround your opponent, if you can just eventually wither them down, should be able to take this, uh, to, to finish off these armies. Look at this, just, I mean, Reaver's getting like eight kills with one Scarab. That's so efficient. But, um, and like, a, look at this, 27 kill Archon. You've got to be kidding me. But just, it's it's just not enough. I mean, Solki is going to come up here. He's going to finish off this base in the top right now. And Snow, I mean, he's dragged it on long enough. He's tried his best. Another storm drop coming through here. Can he actually get some more drone kills? Yeah, he does. There's a... Uh, couple of Scourge coming through. They do pick off the shuttle. They will lose those units. Another Reaver coming out. Don't know what that Reaver was doing. Maybe just rallying out from the the base there in the top right, but ends up getting killed easily by Snow. Or by a Soul Key, excuse me. Snow trying to take control of the bottom, but finally GG is called. Wow, I was waiting there. For quite a while, <laughs> he does eventually tap out, though. Soul Key's going to be your winner. Wow, what an epic last game. All right, guys, here are your point rankings. We've got Zerg in first place now. 4, 3, 2. Protoss in second. Aaron behind in third. Final. Very, very tight season so far. You can see the switch up there kind of converging in week number two and splitting back up again in week number three be an exciting next few weeks of kcm as the asl continues we're going to see more drama unfold between these players more epic games proceed or to uh, follow the asl 1v1s always fun to be part of a team as well you know if you're part of the zerg team and cheer on your teammates even though you might be hating them in the 1v1 tournament even though you might be preparing against them in the 1v1 tournament can act as comrades here and help each other out so thank you so much for joining me here guys i'm going to sign off now we have an excellent week See you guys in the next KCM.